was just eight. Le- this week, we hit four countries at one time. All praise to the most high. And we want to thank the Booster Club, because without you, brothers and sisters, constant support, we wouldn't be able to do it. We hit Suriname, we hit Spain, Ecuador, and South Africa. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time to argue about no corner. I'm talking about a corner. Are you kidding me? Take that corner. We're taking the world. What the hell is this? So give me Matthew. Who's reading for me? Most High Christ, but Officer Joseph next, sir. All right. Let's open it with Matthew 28, 19. And let me say this. South Africa is not Africa. I'm going to say it again. South Africa is not Africa. What I mean by that is where we're at Johannesburg, it's still somewhat got uh, apartheid there. And apartheid is just like a Dutch word for segregation. That's what it means. Black people work there. You see them everywhere, but they don't live there. They go back to Soweto and other townships. Okay, we spoke to a lot of locals as apartheid, which is segregation, ended like 1994, if I'm not mistaken. 1994, around there. So it was about, what, 20, was 29 years ago? 29 years ago. And many of the adults have many stories. So it's still fresh. Uh, those that are trying to, quote, unquote, blend in with white society, they want to make as if it never happened. You could put that on the screen. They act as if it never happened. And you see, when we went, and they got, we really didn't see too many white police. What they did is hire a lot of black security. They paid them like maybe $5 US. That's their job for the week. Five do- might be $10 US for the week. But it's not a lot of money. But they will be, when we try to set up camp, they was on us like white on rice, trying to stop us from teaching. Certain areas, you, they don't want no kind of, uh, what's the word? No kind of uprising or any kind of teaching of revolution, anything. They don't want that. So the blacks was more on us than anything. Um, what else happened? What else? Something else. I'm pretty sure. There was a few things that occurred. A lot of things occurred. I'm just, my mind just went boop. The mic is right there. Thank you. Uh, you have a chance to talk to Joshua. What's that brother name? Joshua Mo. Oh, Mopenga. 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 We should have a chance to talk to him face to face. We uh, we did a lot of uh, podcasts. Uh, what else we do? The word goes out. The word goes out. And by the way, I think I'm the worst. The 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 worst reader in Israel. You are. You are the worst reader. Yes. I never so, told you that, but I am. Okay. So if y'all see the videos, you'll see my face. I try to. <laughs> Maintain myself. Sometimes I lost them. <laughs> what the hell is this? That Bishop, Deacon Isaac set me up. Deacon Isaac set you up? Yep. Deacon Isaac, no, he's the one who usually do that. I usually go to camp. But, <laughs> but, the, I, but the word goes out. Yes, the brothers and sisters are good. Yes, the they were in very good spirit. Yes. Young, young camp, but they're very strong in the scriptures. Hey, a couple of them, Brother Samson, and there was another sister who came from uh, Cape Town. Cape Town. 21, 21 hours, hours in the away. Bus. Yep. That's what we don't, when you brothers say, oh, uh, it's too far, you're 30 minutes away, we don't want to hear no crap from y'all. 21 if brothers can travel bus. 21 hours away yep. by bus to come meet us, yep. y'all got no excuse. No excuse. We gonna, yeah, brothers, if y'all ignore people like that in the camp that say, oh, 30 minutes is too far away for me to get there. Ignore them. They're not with us. Just let them stay home and watch online. They're not really with us. Okay. What else? Something else happened out there? Uh, but, you know, I, I got to say this. A lot of, I think a lot of sisters here would love South Africa. You know why? Because South Africa reminds them of America. It is. It's like America. It's like America. The we only thing oh, is cheaper. Right. We couldn't even videotape out there. No. When you try to put a, if you have a, a, a camera that don't look like a phone, those little security guards be on you, on you. They have uh, streets with cobblestone everywhere. Yep. They got stored with Maseratis, uh, um, Bentleys, Bentleys Rolls Royce. All of the high end. No hoopties was in South Africa. You ain't find one minivan, no hoopties, none of that. Everything was a high end car. Yeah, it was. You know. Uh, if you ever been to California, South Africa is California in South Africa. Yeah. It yep. built, yep, almost the same thing. When you go to the ghettos, part of it reminds me of the Bronx. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Where we at? Where did I say go? 
Matthew 28, verse 19. Sorry. Yeah, read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now, many times Christians use that to say the gospel is for everybody. But the reason he said teach all nations, let's go to Amos 9 and 9, where the prophet Amos prophesies what would happen to the 12 tribes of Israel. Amos chapter 9, verse 9. For lo, I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations. God said I would sift the house of Israel among all nations. Go ahead. Like as corn is mm. sifted in a sieve, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. Why would not the least grain fall upon the earth? Because what Christ just commanded us, to go into all nations and teach. Why? And what's that going to do? Raise up the 12 tribes of earth. You men understand that? Yes, sir. All right. From there, give me Proverbs 25. and tw Hey, y'all can put the pictures on the screen. You just don't show them here. Pop them up. I'm not looking at the screen. Go ahead. All right, start at one, sir. Yep. The book of Proverbs. Proverbs 25, 25. I'm sorry. 25, yes, sir. Proverbs 25, verse 25. As cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Y'all see that? So is good news to a, in a far country. And we came to bring the good news. The word good news there is translated in Greek as gospel. That's what it's talking about, gospel. That's what gospel means, good news. Read that again for me. As cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. So the word of God is this cold water, this cold glass of water that people so thirst for. Many people were shocked and desperately needed to hear this word. So it got, it got, the word got planted and some spirits got watered. All right. So as some of you know, may or may not know, some of you may be in a loop and know what's going on. We know, uh, Soldier, ya soldier Soul Yakin was shot in Kansas. This is while we were out at South Africa. He was shot and hit several times in Kansas City. But he's in good spirits. Uh, Deacon Asaph spoke to him live last night, as well as Deacon Abiel. Okay? He's alive, doing well. All praise to the Most High. The Lord was merciful on him, <laughs> his family, and us. Yes, all praises. And, and I touched on some scriptures yesterday, but it was breaking up, so I'm just going to touch on them briefly, okay, so that we all understand what we're in. Get me Matthew 10, 20. I need all you men who are on the street teaching. I need you men up and coming who want to be leaders, camp leaders, soldiers, officers, captains. I want you all to understand what you are in. And you will make your decision whether or not you are built for this or not. Give me that. 28. Matthew, uh, what did I say, go? You said Matthew's 10. 10, 38. 38, yes, sir. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 38. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me. Read it again. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Who can tell me what that means? Who can tell me what that means? All right. Get up, stand up. Come on. One of you pick somebody. Hey, yes. shalom, bishop, most shalom. Christ bless. You're talking about you had to make up your mind to die out there for the court for this word. There you go. When it says take up your cross, about be willing to die. That's what it's talking about. It ain't talking about you can't pay your damn light bill. Read it again. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Mm -hmm. And he that findeth his life shall lose it. So he that findeth his life shall lose it. That's you. Run, scaredy cat brothers. You Don't go on the street and teach. Y'all don't be doing that. That's a brother trying to save his life. You're trying to save your life, but what? You're going to lose it. Why? Because when that destruction hits this place, ashes to ashes, baby. Read that again. And he that findeth his life shall lose it. Mm -hmm. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. If you lose your life for Christ's sake, you shall find it. Meaning what? Eternal life. Rulership dominating the world. Everybody understand that? Yes, Give me uh, Romans 12 and 1. I want everybody to understand what this is all about. There's always the threat and the fear of death. But if you are not willing to die for something, <laughs> life ain't worth living. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. 
you died for you. To, what is it? What's that expression? You won't live if you live for you. If you won't die for something, you can't live for nothing. Something like that. And Bishop, you know what's crazy about that? When he says, he that findeth his life shall lose it. Mm -hmm. Some of you are comfortable being oppressed. Right. You're comfortable with the enemy being on top. And this is not living. You're surviving. Right. Real life begins when we're ruling. That's what heaven is. So that's why he says, he that findeth his life. Some of you are going to find, as long as you can pay your bills, as long as you got a house, as long as you got a car, you'll live like that till you die and that's it. But real life, real living is not being ruled over. And that's why he says, he that findeth his life shall lose it. Because some of you are comfortable with the enemy in power. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, let me see that. What you got for me? Yeah, put that on the... Well, that ain't act actually it, but I like it. I'll use that anyway. Those who stand for nothing fall for anything. Um, Romans 12 and 1. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It's your reasonable service to present your body a living sacrifice. What's that talking about? Be willing to die. That's what he's saying. That's what the Lord is saying. There's always a fear of death when we hit those streets. Somebody disgruntled, somebody mad, somebody jealous. Oh, they got more members than me. Oh, uh, we got to kill them. We got to fight them. Simple as hell. Let me show you that. Give me that in that Acts 17.5. I ain't get to my lesson yet. I ain't start yet. The book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 5. But the Jews which believe not. The Jews which believe not. Moved with envy. Moved with what? With envy. 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 Many Israelite camps have envy. Why? Because they don't understand what this is all about. They are looking at this gospel as a competition. When we're all trying to get the kingdom of heaven on earth, New Jerusalem. We all want that. But the devil within them can't see that, will not allow them to see that. So it's a constant competition. I, I only got five, five members, so I'm a, and I'm a captain of 25,000. you simple as hell. You don't understand simple mathematics. Read that again for me. But the Jews which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows. Certain camps can only gather certain lewd fellow, fellows. Go ahead. Of the baser sort. Of the baser sort, meaning bums. Nobody. Nobodies, vagabonds. That's what they gather together. And when they get those spirits, they don't know how to build those spirits. Mm. Don't get me wrong. We might gather some of them type of spirits, but guess what? We're going to build you. We're going to make sure you turn into a man of God. We're going to make sure you turn into a good father, a good husband, a good soldier before you do anything. You ever understand that? Yes, sir. We ain't going to allow none of you to stay bums up in here. We ain't going to allow us. You got to go. Okay. Did you finish that verse? No, sir. Go ahead. And Some of y'all looking at me, but it's all right. Go ahead. <laughs> and gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar mm -hmm. and assaulted the house of Jason. See that? They assaulted the house of Jason. That's what y'all see going on in Kansas. That's what you see. Did you finish the verse? And sought to bring them out to the people. Mm -hmm. When y'all read that whole chapter, goes into jealous Negroes. Okay. From there. From there. Give me uh, Romans. What is it? 828, I think. Is it 828 I want? I touched it yesterday. I'm just trying to remember. Mm -hmm. uh, nope. That ain't it. That ain't it. Give me Hebrews 12 and 4. Tell it pop back into my mind what I want. 836, thank you. Thank you, thank you. 836. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 36. Listen good. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Why did Paul say that? Because he understood by teaching the gospel, he was on the, under a constant state of threat of death. Understand, I want you men, don't think going on the street teaching is always going to be a walk through the tulips. Mm -mm. There's danger out there. You're in the peril of your life, but guess what? It's worth it. Everybody understand that? Yes, 
is worth it gathering the 12 tribes of Israel, restoring the men and women of our people back to their true heritage. It's worth it. Who wants to live their life with, with drug dealers and drug users and homosexuals and prostitutes? Nobody want to live like that. That's not living. That's not living. Okay. From there, Hebrews 12 and 4. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 4. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Paul was getting on those Hebrews there who just sat behind a computer and talked and talked. Well, they didn't have a computer back then, but I'm used bringing it up to today. Read it again. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. That's what we do when we hit them streets. We're, we're striving against, read it again, resist, read it again. You have not yet resisted unto blood. We are resisting unto blood. Why? Striving against sin. Striving against sin. Because everybody, why don't y'all just stop teaching? Go back into the world. Be what you used to be. A whoremonger. A prostitute. A thief. A liar. A murderer. Go back to that life. No, we're not going back. They didn't want to threaten us. Give me that in Ezekiel. But, uh, this might be chapter 3 or 2 where it says make your face hard. I want you men to understand what this is about so that there's no misunderstandings. I thought this was just going to be a walk in the park. Okay. Ezekiel 3 and 9. Oh, eight. Verse 8. 8 and 9. I want 8 and yes, 9. Yes, sir. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 8. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their forehead. Why? Because our people want to stay in sin. They want to stay in sin. Understand, sin is pleasurable. You are interfering in their pleasure. Oh, I know some of y'all don't know about that. Give me that. Hold that. Give me that one in Hebrews. It might be 11 where it says uh, sin is pleasurable. I want that one. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hebrews 10 or Hebrews 11. It's somewhere there. It's Hebrews 11. Where is it? Read that. Hebrews eleven twenty four. Hebrews chapter eleven verse twenty four. By faith Moses, when he has come to his, come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. See that more than to enjoy the if the pleasures of sin for a season. Moses un understood that life is temporary. Life is temporary. Why enjoy it in sin when you're going to get cast into the lake of fire, destroyed when the Son of God returned? Why do that? He said, no, 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 I'd rather suffer with my people. Now let's go on back to where we was at. Yes, sir. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 8. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an ornament harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not. Fear, see that? Fear them not. Why? Because just like we read in Acts 17, 5, certain lewd fellows of the base assault were raised up by the unbelieving Jews. In what? Fear and threat of death. Go ahead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks. Don't be dismayed at their looks, because our people know how to give a screw face. Go ahead. Though they be a rebellious house. Though they be a rebellious house. Do you men understand what you're involved in? Yes, sir. Understand that. Now, that's just our people. That, we didn't even get to the white man coming on us yet. What are you going to say? That's what I was going to say. Hey, men, make no mistake about it. Remember when they, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they try everything. They cannot get Christ. What did they do? They joined the enemy. Mm -hmm. Guess what? It's the same thing. Because there's group out there, they keep trying everything against IOSC. When nothing works, what, what are they going to do? They're going to join Esau. They're going to go to the enemy to kill us. Because the spirit of Judas Kerry is in the earth right now. Trust me. There's a lot of camp out there that got that Judas scary spirit. They got it on them. That hatred for the brothers, they got it on them. So make no mistake about it. A lot of time, I know we're looking for the enemy. The enemy is Esau. Esau, no. Our people is one of the biggest enemy, believe it or not. Because of jealousy, hatred. So keep that in mind. Yep. Give me that first Maccabees. Uh, 11, 21 maybe. That might be it. I don't have it written down. Yes, sir. That's it? Yes, sir. Go ahead. The book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 11, verse 21. 
Then certain ungodly persons. Certain ungodly persons. Who hated their own people. See that? Who hated their own people. That's what you see in Israelite camps. They make as if they're Israelites, but they're not Israelites. They wear no fringes. They don't obey. When you see men that claim to be Israelites and they don't wear fringes, they're telling you, we don't keep the commandments. We're not. We want killers. <laughs> That's what they want. We want drug dealers. We want drunkards. That's what they want. Read it again. Then certain ungodly persons who hated their own people went unto the king and told him that Jonathan besieged the tower. That's what Deacon Malachi was saying. They're going to join the white man. Those type of spirits always. It's historically, biblically accurate. Make no mistakes. No ifs, ands, or buts. They will join the white man against this truth. We're going to say deep. And why do you think that an organization would want people like that? Who knows? Why would you pick those specific type of people? You can control them better. They're, notice none of them don't know the scriptures. There's, no, there's none of them known on video for breaking down scriptures. Like, let me watch this guy's class. He's good. You notice in IUIC, you could pick almost any camp and find a teacher that you like that's well-learned. But when you see an organization saying, we want killers, we want murderers, we want drug dealers, we want this, you can easily manipulate and control them because the Christian church does that now. Do they not have the same type of people in their church making believe that they're following God and they know no scriptures? So why is it so shocking for it to be in the Israelite community? That's why they want that mindset. And then those men will do anything for the leaders instead of doing anything for the nation and for God. Right. And that's what you see in taking place. That's why they'll come out and fight and say, this corner belongs to such and such. No, the world belongs to the Most High and His Son. Right. Not to no man on this earth. That's crazy, and that's the stuff y'all got to see. And understand, we know some of you come out of those lifestyles, and that's okay. But in this gospel, in this truth, you're going to be transformed. You understand that? Give me that Romans 12 and 2. You will be changed or you will be put out. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. We're not, if you were a killer, a drug user, a drug addict, a whoremonger, a pimp, a prostitute, a hoe, you will be transformed. Read it again. And be not conformed to this world. We're not going to allow you to be conformed to this world. To be conformed to this world means to stay in your sin. Stay as a drug dealer, drug user, homosexual, liar, thief. We're not going to allow you to stay conformed to this world. Go ahead. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what IUIC is about. That's what this is about. You must and you will be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Go ahead. That you may prove. That you may prove. What is that good mm -hmm. and acceptable and perfect will of God? The only way for you to prove that this is the truth is when people see your transformation. They say, you know, I know him. I know her. She made a whole 180. They changed their life. And if it worked for them, I know it could work for me. Everybody understand that? Yes, That's what the verse is about. First Maccabees 1 and 11. I still didn't get to my topic, but I'm almost there. The book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 11. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men. You who, see that? Out of Israel, wicked men. Go ahead. Who persuaded many. Who persuaded many. Saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. Read. So this device pleased them well. That's what you had in Acts chapter 17. That's what you read in the book of Acts. They made a covenant with death and with hell, like it says in Isaiah 28 and 29. Same thing. It's true then. It's true today amongst Israelites. Understand. It's, and I'm just saying Israelite because that's the most recent thing. But there's other politicians, congressmen, pastors like Deacon Asaph is talking about, Christian theologians. Everybody understand that? All right. Then let's get into the topic. Today's topic is entitled Buck Breaking and building God's people. Buck breaking and building God's people. Write this down. The Bible teaches us that no broken people is beyond repair. The Bible teaches us that no broken people is beyond repair. 
give me a, let me think. It's just ain't in my notes, but it just popped into my head. I believe it's Psalms 23. Uh, let me look at it. Let me look at it. Read verse 2 and 3. Yes, Psalm sir. 1 to 3. 1 to 3. Yes, sir. Psalms 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Talk about the kingdom. Go ahead, promised land. Go ahead. He leadeth me beside the still waters. The still waters is peace, the word of God. Here comes the point I want, though. He restoreth my soul. Stop. He restoreth my soul. Why is that important for today's lesson? Because in order for our soul to be restored means something catastrophic happened to our soul. It was destroyed. Our soul, our mental faculty, our spiritual faculty was decimated through slavery, colonialism, oppression. So our soul, which caused what? Us to lose our heritage, our culture, our language. We lost everything, brothers and sisters. Even our families have been destroyed. Now we're trying to restore what we've lost. Read that verse 3 again. He restored my soul. Read. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Meaning he leads us in the commandments of God in the faith of his son Christ for his name's sake. That's what that means. Everybody understand that? Give me uh, Zechariah chapter 1. Zechariah chapter 1. And we are going to start at verse mm, 18. Yes, sir. The book of Zechariah, chapter 1, verse 18. Then lifted I up mine eyes and saw, and behold, four horns. Four horns. Write this down. Four horns. Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome. Those are the four horns. Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome. Those are the four horns. Read. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be these? What be these? What are these four horns? Go ahead. And he answered me, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. These are the horns which have scattered, meaning destroyed, Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Again, Babylon, Persia media, Greece, and Rome. Persia media was one kingdom. They worked together. Read. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, right there. Carpenters. Read. Then no, said, no, no, no. I'll, I'll explain it. The four carpenters. Write this down. In, you had Daniel and the men that were with him. The, when it says carpenters, it's, it's not just referring to one particular individual. So in Babylon, the four carpenters, you had Daniel, the three holy children. You also had Jeremiah. You had Ezekiel during the Babylonian captivity. And there's some others that I may be forgetting, but those are the ones that pop to my mind right now. So the four carpenters, you had Daniel, you had Jeremiah, you had the uh, three Hebrews with him. Everybody with me so far? Yes, sir. Persia media, you had Zerubbabel, you had Joshua, you had Ezra, you had Nehemiah, you had Zechariah. Those were carpenters. Everybody with me? Am I going too fast? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. I'm sorry. Also during Persian media, you had Mordecai and Esther. Queen Esther, Queen Esther. They, she helped save our people alive. Let me know when I can go on. Oh, my Lord in heaven. Okay. The four, y'all got the horns, right? Yes, the carpenters. Now, the carpenters during the time of Babylon, Jeremiah, Daniel, the three Hebrews that were with Daniel. Uh, did I say Ezekiel? Ezekiel. Can I go on? All right. During Persia media, you had Zerubbabel, Joshua, Ezra, Nehemiah, Zechariah, you even had Haggai. He just popped on mind too. Haggai. Oh, Mordecai and Esther. Thank you. Mordecai and Queen Esther. Those were carpenters. Okay.
Can I go on? During the time of Greece, you had Mattathias, his son Judas Maccabee, Jonathan Maccabee, Simon Maccabee. We just put the Maccabees, that's to make it simple, the Maccabees. All right, can I go on? All right, during the time of Rome, you had Christ, 12 apostles, and Paul, the apostle Paul. And there were many others also, but those are the most famous ones. We good? We good? We good? All right. So read that again. Read that again. Read it again. Start at 18 again. Yes, sir. Verse 18. Then lifted up I up mine eyes and saw, and behold, four horns. Babylon, Persia Media, Greece and Rome. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be these? And he answered me, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Come on. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Those are the men. That helped set or we try to restore Israel. Go ahead. Then said I, what come these to do? Mm -hmm. And he spake, saying, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head. But these are come to fray them. But these are come to fray them. Go ahead. To cast out the horns of the Gentiles. To go against what the Gentiles have done to us. Which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. So these what we're going to discuss today, these carpenters, these carpenters. In the New Testament, write this down. These carpenters, in the New Testament, uses the word wise master builders. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I finally got one. <laughs> Give me Daniel 2, 38. Daniel 2, verse 38. Watch this. The book of Daniel. Chapter 2, verse 30. Wait, wait, wait. Y'all with me? Daniel 2, 38. All right. Wait, wait. Let me look at it. Start at verse 36. Yes, sir. This is uh, da, 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 Daniel interpreting a dream Nebuchadnezzar had. Go ahead. The book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 36. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. See, the part which said, thou art this head of gold, lets you know where the Lord is starting from. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream that Daniel interpreted of an image of a statue like you see on the screen. It had a head of gold, it had arms of silver, uh, the loins were made of bronze, the legs and feet were iron, and then the feet were iron and partly clay, okay? As you can see, the head of gold, and I'll put the years up there, approximate years, 605 B.C. to 539 B.C. That was Babylonian rule. Persia media, right, Persia media ruled from 539. 539 B.C. to 332 B.C. The Greeks came in 332 B.C. to 64 B.C. That's the Greeks. Roman Empire was from 64 B.C. to 193 A.D. Okay. And then you had Europe and America today was an extension of Rome, 1441 to the present. Okay. Most Christian commentaries like to ignore the United States of America being in Bible prophecy, but they are there. They're there, Blanche. They are there. So let's go on back to verse 39 now. You can leave, you can leave that on the screen. Verse 39. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee. And that's Persia Media. And another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over the, all the earth. That's the Greeks. Everybody got that? That is the Greeks. Read. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. That's Rome. That's the Roman Empire. Go ahead. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, 
and as iron that breaketh all these. Shall it break in pieces and brew? Now, this is the same thing that we read about in Zechariah. When Zechariah said, I see four horns, it's the same thing Daniel saw. Go ahead. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of the potter's clay mm -hmm. and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. That's today's time period, the kingdom being divided. Go ahead. Remember, Christ said, if a kingdom is divided, it cannot what? Stand. It can't stand. Go ahead. But there shall be in it of the strength of the iron. That's the military. That's America's military and NATO. NATO is the armed forces side of this system. Go ahead. For as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. He's about to explain the miry clay in a moment. Go ahead. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron. That's their military. And part of clay. Mm -hmm. So the kingdom shall be partly strong. And partly broken. What does he mean by that? Verse 43. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, mm -hmm. they, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. That's how you know it's America. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. They got all nations here. They got the same thing in uh, uh, London, England. Mixed nations everywhere. Nations that they destroyed. Nations that Habakkuk told you would come and reside amongst us. Okay? Read. But they shall not cleave one to another. That's why there's always turmoil, always problems. Go ahead. Even as iron is not mixed with clay. Now watch this. Somebody asked me during when we were in South Africa, I believe it was. No, 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 no. no. It wasn't in South Africa. I did an interview where the interviewer asked, what makes Israel United in Christ different than other um, uh Organizations that rose up like the Black Panthers, like uh, Nation of Islam, like uh, SNCC, like uh, the, the movement with Marcus Garvey, so forth and so on. What makes us different? The next verse is what I gave up. I said, you're not going to stop this truth. Nobody can stop. This is the difference. Read verse 44. And in the days of it. Set up a kingdom. And in case you men and women didn't understand, this is what the Lord is doing. The resurrection of the Israelites is God setting up his kingdom. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Read. Watch this. Which shall never be destroyed. Which shall never be destroyed. You men understand that? You can't stop this. No matter if you take out one of us, two of us, three of us, all of us, guess what? You're not going to stop this. The word of God cannot be stopped. Go ahead. And the kingdom shall not be left to another people. Now, no matter how you feel about it, the kingdom's not left for other people. Other nations is not going to rule and dominate. Understand, everybody understand that? Everybody, what about the white man? He ain't ruling a damn thing in the kingdom of heaven. What about the Chinese? He ain't ruling a damn thing in the kingdom of heaven. What about the Arabs? He ain't ruling a damn thing in the kingdom of heaven. This is about the Israelites. You can clap, sisters. Don't be scared. Don't feel intimidated. This is about your people. Read that again, verse 44. Bishop, and, yes. those nations that you're worried about being having dominion with you, they're already ruling now. Right, right. And they don't care about you. So why do you want them to be on the same level as you are that God is trying to put you? Because you hate your people. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason why you hate your people. Read that again, 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So NATO's going to be destroyed, America's going to be destroyed, and all the four em other empires shall be destroyed. That's what this dream was all about, that Nebuchadnezzar had, that Daniel had to interpret. Read. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hand. That's Christ. Write that down. The stone is Christ. Go ahead. And that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. Mm -hmm. The great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain. The dream is certain. And the interpretation thereof, sure. And the interpretation is sure. You understand that? So that stone, give me that precept about the stone, which is Christ first, on oh, that first, um, first Corinthians, yeah. Chapter 10 might be verse four, thank you. 
This stone is Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. See, that, that rock was Christ. That's what that stone is talking about. Everybody understand that? All right, all right. Very good. Let's go to Ma Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. And I want verse 17. Yes, sir. The book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 17. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David unto the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. So notice he mentions Babylon. Go ahead. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. What are the next three empires from Babylon to Christ. What are the next empires that rose from Babylon to Christ? Somebody in the black shirt. Let me hear you. Ephraim, right there. Yeah, you. Yep. Shalom. Shalom. So the nations after Babylon, you have the Persian media, you have Greece, and you have Rome. Right. Very good. When Christ was born, it was during the Roman Empire. So Matthew here in chapter 1, verse 17 is talking about the same history that Christians like to ignore. Jump down to verse 17 for us. I mean, verse 21, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. You know why that's important? Our sins is what causes us to go into captivity. Our sins is what caused us to fall under Babylon, under Persia media. Under Greece, under Rome. Everybody understand that? And remember, America is just an extension of ancient Rome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Everybody understand that? All righty. Then we watch it. Luke 21, 19. The book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 19. In your patience, possess ye your souls. You know why he said that? Because... Everybody wanted the kingdom of heaven to be established during that time when Christ was teaching. That's why John the Baptist, while he was in prison, said, hey, go ask him. Is he the one that we should wait for or do we seek another? And John, the father already told John that that was Christ. But he lost. He started to get weak for a second because he thought the kingdom was going to be set up then. In Acts 1 verse 6, remember the Lord, they said to Christ, Lord, were thou at this time? Restore the kingdom to Israel? Give, give me that real quick. Acts 1 and 6, I think it is. Yes, sir. Everybody said, this time, this time, this time. Just like us now. We said, now, Lord, now. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 6. When they, therefore, were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou, at this time, restore again the kingdom to Israel? That was it. So everybody wanted to happen now, in their time. Just like now. Go back to um, Luke. Yes, right sir. now, many of us in here listening, many of you online, say, I wish the Lord come back today. It ain't time yet. Because he said in Revelation 7 and 4, he told you when in Revelation 7 and 4. Give me that real quick. It ain't in my notes, but just to ease your troubled minds. Y'all looking at these Christian movies about rapture. I remember I used to watch them shows years ago. Come home, everybody's at uh, the store. I'm thinking a rapture hit. Oh, oh, I got left. I got left. Because I'm following the stupid Christians. Read that. <laughs> the book of Revelations, chapter 7, verse 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Read the verse above it. I'm sorry. Verse 3. Verse 3. Saying. Hurt not the earth. Hurt not the earth, meaning don't destroy the earth yet. Neither the sea. Do not destroy the armies in the sea yet. Nor the trees. Don't destroy the trees. Till we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. See that? Till we have sealed the servant. De Destruction is not going to come until all the servants of God have been sealed yet. Think about this. The Apostle Paul and people with him, who would have ever thought that they were part of the elect? Many times there are men and women that scoff at camp. Don't worry about them scoffing. Some of them are the elect. I'm, I want you to understand that. 
some of them are the elect. It's just not their time to be woken up yet. Their time is not today. Their time may not be next week or next month. It might be next year or the year after. Everybody understand that? Yes, Give me that in Romans 11. Just, just staying in my notes, but just popped in my head. Romans 11, I think, verse. The one about their beloved for the Father's sake. I want that. They're enemies, but they are beloved. It might be around 28, 26, 28. Yeah, eleven twenty-eight. Start it. Start it. Start at twenty-six, and, and 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 you up and coming teachers. When people ask you about Romans chapter eleven, Romans chapter eleven is about the twelve tribes of Israel. The proof is verse twenty-six to twenty-eight, as we're about to read. Watch this. The book of Romans chapter eleven, verse twenty-six. And so all Israel shall be saved. Referring to the elect of Israel. All Israel shall be saved. That's what the whole chapter is about. The saving of the 12 tribes of Israel. It's not talking about Edomites and Philistines and Ishmaelites being grafted in. It's not talking about that. This is the evidence. Read verse 26 again. And so all Israel shall be saved. Mm -hmm. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer. That's Christ. And shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Jacob is the 12 tribes of Israel. Read. For this is my covenant unto them. This is my covenant unto them. When I shall take away their sins. When I shall take away their. You got to stress the right words. Their sins. Go ahead. Here come. Thank you. Go ahead. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. Stop. Let's pause there. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. Why? Because many of them threaten us, many of them hate us, many of them despise us. Just like Saul, who later became the apostle Paul. But don't worry about that. Go ahead. But as touching the election. But as touching the election. They are beloved for the Father's sake. Why? Because some of them are destined to repent. Don't worry about that hatred today. Don't worry about them making a hard face against you today. Y'all don't think they wanted to do Paul harm when they killed, killed Stephen? Remember, they, people saw that. You don't think that thought said, you know, we should take this nigga out. That comes in your mind, but you got to dismiss them thoughts. The Lord said, you don't know what you're talking about. That man that wanted Stephen dead, he's part of the elect. And he came into the truth, and he was a mighty soldier for this gospel, this truth. Y'all understand that? Yes, so that's why we got to always remember that. Think about that. I know it's hard. Don't get, I, I get them nigga thoughts too. Let's take them niggas. Oh! No, no, that's the wrong thought. <laughs> and that's why we don't condemn no other camp. Because the same camp scoffing against us today could be uh, part of the, the gathering tomorrow. You understand? So we're not going to go back and forth with them. We'll point out what they're doing wrong to make everybody aware because a lot of you are confused. But we're not digging up information on them and going into their personal lives and calling them all out their name and calling them homosexuals and all that stuff. Those are lewd fellows. That's what lewd fellows do. They cannot teach the gospel, so they disparage and discredit you. That's what a lewd fellow do. Let's go on back to Luke 21. I forgot why I left this. But anyway, Luke 21 and verse 20. The book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 20. Start at 19 again. 19, yes, sir. In your patience, possess ye your soul. That's why I went to those precepts. We got to be patient. We want the Lord to come back now. But there's a remnant, according to election, that must be sealed with God's laws and commandments. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Read on. And when you shall see Jerusalem, come past with armies, then... Note that the desolation thereof is not. Christ said, when you see Jerusalem compassed by Roman armies, know that the destruction is near. He's talking about 70 A.D. He's prophesying what was going to happen in the year 70 A.D. Go ahead. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. The mountains he's talking about to flee to are the same mountains in Matthew. Get that, Matthew 2.13. This is how you prove that. Where did the angel tell Joseph to take his wife and the baby Christ? Read that. Matthew 2, verse 13. And when they de were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, 
and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. Flee into Africa. Flee deeper into Africa. That's what he's talking about. And that's what he fled. Let's go back to Luke 21. Luke 21, verse 21. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountain. So understand, this history in here. We fled deeper into the recesses of Africa when the Roman armies came. Not only at that time period, but that was a millions of us fled in, deep into Africa. But during the time of Babylon, you read about us going into Africa. They called it Egypt. We fled deeper into there. During the time of Persia, Media, and Greece, we were always going deeper into the continent. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. This is the continent where you had the Jebusites, the Philistines, the Horites, uh, the Hittites, uh, Tyre and Zidon, the Gergesites, Parasites. That's what it, that was their land. We went deeper into there. Read that again, 21, please. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter thereinto. Don't come back in. Go ahead. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Referring to what Moses prophesied about in Deuteronomy 20. Let me show you the prophecy for time's sake. Deuteronomy 28, let's start at verse 49. This is what Christ was prophesying. The same prophecies Moses gave. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from fall. From the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth. Rome. Right. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Now, you could also use that part for America. You could also use that for Greece. They all had the symbol of the eagle. We didn't understand their tongue. They came against us. But I'm bringing it back to Rome. Right. A nation of fierce countenance. Now, when it said, in, uh, whose tongue thou shalt not understand, they spoke Latin. Rome spoke Latin. Got right? A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. Mm -hmm. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle, and the fruit of thy land. They took the natural resources, go ahead. Until thou be destroyed. Until thou be destroyed, go ahead. Which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thy kind, or flocks of thy sheep, until... He have destroyed thee. Come on. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates. Now this part right here that lets you know is pinpointing Rome. And he shall besiege you in all thy gates. Until thy high and fenced walls we come. Had a, we had a high and fenced wall around Jerusalem. Go ahead. Until thy high and fenced walls come down. Wherein thou trustedest throughout all thy land. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates. Throughout all thy land, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. Let's go on back to Matt, uh, Luke 21, please. Let's go on back. In verse Luke 21, 22. The book of Luke 21, verse 22. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. So when it says that all things which are written may be fulfilled, he's referring point one to the time of Moses. And there are many other prophets that spoke about this as well. Okay. Read. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Right, because remember, it was a seven-year wage of war. Some of our people stayed, and Rome blocked us off, allowing no food or water to enter at all. And we became cannibals. Some of our people that remained became cannibals. You can read, when you go back to do it, I mean 20, it goes into detail. Okay, so just write that down. Read on. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. Again, because there was no food. There was no water. We started to eat our children. Got it? And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. So the zealots that were amongst us, the zealots, and you also had, who was that other group? The Sakari, which were assassins, they stayed. You had some of the Pharisees stayed. Uh, the Sadducees stayed. The scribes stayed. They got slaughtered. They got slaughtered by Rome. We tried our people. Some of our people stayed and fight. They rejected what Christ said. We ain't running nowhere. We're going to stay here and fight Christ. I told y'all to run. Told y'all to leave. You're not going to win this. Some decided we're going to stay. Okay? 
And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. And what's going to happen to those that are not killed? And shall be led away captive into all nations. Those of us that got captured by Rome were led away captive as slaves into all nations. This is again, this is another priest of white Christ said, go you into all nations, baptizing them and teaching them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, whatsoever I've commanded. Because Israel was scattered and led away captive into all nations. That's another precept of Paul, okay? And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. Now Christ tells you who would live in Jerusalem. He said the Gentiles, which are the true, authentic Gentiles, would live in Jerusalem. Go ahead. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Let me see who's thinking. What does that mean, until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled? We've been reading about it from the beginning of today's lesson. Name the times of the Gentiles. Who are they? Hands, hands, hands. Name them. Shalom, Bishop. Shalom. What's your name? Ben David. Ben David. Yes, sir. He said the times of the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? The Gentiles are the... I want them in order. It's Babylon, mm. um, Persian Mede, mm -hmm. Greece, Rome, and America. Very good. Very good. You're paying attention. Very good. You can give him a hand. Y'all can give him a hand. He got it. He got it. Uh, see, I like when I see the black shirt brother studying. That's good, Ben David. Thank you. So until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. We're still in the times of the Gentiles today. Everybody understand that? Revelation 12 and 1, please. The book of Revelation. Oh, oh, oh. I said the, the scribes and they all got killed. Let me give you, let me show you that. Let me show y'all that. Zechariah chapter 11. This ain't in my notes, but it popped in my head. And I, I don't think I ever went over this chapter with y'all in detail. Some of the captains I have, but some of you young men I have not. Uh, Zechariah 11. Who knows what I'm talking about? Uh, let me look at it before you throw me off. Zechariah 11 and 8. The book of Zechariah, chapter 11, verse 8. Three shepherds also I cut off in one month. And my soul loathed them, and their soul also abhorred me. The three shepherds that hated Christ and that, hate, and, and that the Lord hated? The Pharisees, scribes, Sadducees. Read that again. Three shepherds also I cut off in one month. The one month he's talking about is 70 A.D. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And my soul loathed them. God hated them. And their soul also abhorred and they, me. And they hated God. They hated Christ. Read that part again. And my soul loathed them, and their soul also abhorred me. Read. Then said I, I will not feed you. I won't feed you, which is truth. Go ahead. That, that dieth, let it die. Those that are destined to die, let them die. Go ahead. And that that is to be cut off, let it be cut off. Mm -hmm. And let the rest eat. Every one, the flesh of another. You see that part? That's in 70 AD. We became cannibals. That's Deuteronomy 28:55, when we ate our sons and daughters. This chapter 11 is going into what happened during that time period. Mm. But that's for another day, another time, another mm. lesson. Let's go back to Revelation 12. So I just put that nugget in there so y'all write that down mm -hmm. so you know what it's talking about. Revelation 12 and 1. Yes, sir. Revelation 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. So this woman, give me that Jeremiah 6 and 2. We always go there. This woman. Go ahead. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 6, verse 2. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. So this woman represents the nation of Israel. When it says clothed, uh, it says clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. The precept is Ro Proverbs 6.23. Write that down and let's read it. This is what it represents, the sun and the moon. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. The law is light. Go ahead. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Let's go back to Revelation 12 and 1 one more time. 
Revelation 12 and 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. Representing the law, the and, covenants. Go ahead. And upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. That's how you know it's the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. So as the nation of Israel, we cried for a deliverer. When is Messiah coming? Go ahead. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon. A great red dragon. Having seven heads. Having seven heads. Did y'all see the seven heads on the screen? You had Greece, Rome, Spain, France, Germany, Russia, Great Britain. Go ahead. And ten horns. Y'all see the ten horns there? Belgium, Luxembourg, Netherlands. These are the modern day names. Germany, United Kingdom, Italy, Greece, France, Denmark, and Ireland. Read. And seven crowns upon his head. Uh -huh. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. And they cast them to the earth. So the third of the stars that was cast to the earth, you had Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and a portion of northern kingdom that were amongst us. Everybody with me? Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and a portion of northern kingdom was among us. Read that again. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and they cast them to the earth. 70 AD. Go ahead. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it be, was born. So as Rome destroyed us, now I'm going back before 70 AD, when Christ was born, because this is when it, which verse 4 is talking about. See, for to devour her child as soon as it was born, that's what we read at the beginning with Matthew 2.13. Matthew chapter 1 also. Everybody with me so far? I don't want to lose nobody. So in verse 4, Christ is born. Herod was going, attempted to kill the baby Christ, the baby Messiah. Go ahead. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And a child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Now, the precept for that, write this down, read this. Acts chapter 1, verse 9. Let's read this. When it says, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Acts chapter 1, verse 9 through 11. Acts chapter 1, verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. A chariot received him. Go ahead. And, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go they, into heaven. They say he's going to come back the same way you see him leave. Let's go back now. Revelation 12. In verse 5 again. Revelation 12, verse 5. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. So that's what we read in Acts. Verse 6 now. And the woman fled into the wilderness. This is Matthew 2, 13. This is Luke 21, verse 21, where Christ said, flee. Where okay, she, everybody, everybody understand when Christ said, flee into the mountains. Read that again, verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness. That's Africa. Go ahead. Where she hath a place prepared of God. The place right there is America first and foremost, followed by the other countries we were scattered in. That's the place. Go ahead. That they should feed her. That the dragon should feed her. There, a thousand Two hundred and three score days. So that's 1,260 days, which equals 350 years. It's symbolic. Three and a half years, which is symbolic for 350 years. Everybody understand it? Write that down, write that down, write that down. Okay? Let me give you a few seconds. Give you a few seconds. So now when we fled into the wilderness, I want you all to listen good to what I'm about to say. When we fled into the wilderness, 70 AD, I'm pinpointing, 70 AD, we fled into the wilderness. Millions of us, not one or two of us, millions of us fled deeper into Africa. 
what happened. Give me Psalms 106, verse 35. This is what happened. Psalms, chapter 106, verse 35. But were mingled... Start of, start, start, read the verse above it. I'm sorry. Verse 34. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them. What happened? But were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. Y'all see what happened? We were mingled among the heathens and learned their works. From the time of Babylon, Persia Media, Greece, Rome, and when we fled into Africa amongst the Philistines, the Gergesites, the Jebusites, the Hittites. Everybody understand that? We were mingled amongst them. Okay? This, listen to what I'm about to say. This is how we became Yoruba. This is how we became Igbo. This is how we became Ashanti. This is how we became Akan. This is how we became Congolese. This is how we became Zulu. This is how we became Zosa. This is how we became Botswana. This is how we became Shangana. This is how we became Mandingo. So forth and so forth. We were mingled amongst them and learned their works. Does everybody understand? Yes, sir. All right. Give me Isaiah 10. Watch this. Start at 11 or 10? I want verse 1. Verse 1, yes, sir. The book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 1. Oh, put that on the screen. Very good. Put that. Put it on the screen before we go into that. Very good. Thank you for the map. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So as we often show this map, it's historical. This is when we fled deep into the recesses of Africa. Go to the very bottom, very bottom. Yep. I... I yeah, I need a magnifying glass because you know I'm half blind. You got the uh, Marumba Jews, okay? In the very bottom, bottom, it says, uh, I can't even read that. Some, yeah, thank you very much, Loando Jews. Let's go up the coast of Gabon. Right there, San, to San Tome with St. Thomas Jews right there. St. Thomas. Esau had a map of where we were scattered. Go ahead, go up. You see in Nigeria, highlight Nigeria, highlight Nigeria, right right there. And y'all see it, go back to the highlight, highlight. Y'all see it says in red, Levite cities, move over. Levite cities, this is amongst the Yoruba, this is amongst the Igbo and the Hausa. Below that, you see it says, Beni Ephraim, Ephraim, meaning sons of Ephraim. Some of them were amongst us, not all of them, but some of them. Go along the Dahomey Empire. Right there, highlight Dahomey Empire, right there. They got this movie called Woman Kings about the Dahomey. But highlight it. Come on, y'all, don't mess me up. Y'all see it above it. It says Dahomey Jews. Esau knows that we mingle amongst them. Go over. It says Jewish traces. Now, it says Ashanti <coughs> in black. Jewish traces, and they got arrows there. Let's go up along the coast. <coughs> Up where it says Senegambia, Judeo paganism. Okay, raise it up. All on it, you got Lamb Lamb Jews. Move it over so we can see it. Lamb Lamb, once a Jew. Come on, y'all. Lamb Lamb, once a Jewish colony, decimated, destroyed. Move over to my right. Timbuktu, which, which was an area famous for their books of learning. Those were Israelites there. Move over to the left, right, go up, medieval Jewish traces right there, go up, go up along the, all in red are the Israelites, all in red are the Israelites, okay, even when you go, go further up, Beni Musa, go up, up, up where it says Spain, right there, you, Israelites were all throughout Spain and Portugal as well, all in red. Okay, now let's go along where Ethiopia is and Saudi Arabia. That's why I said, although they don't show our people on TV, our people are there. Okay, and they speak Arabic in Saudi Arabia. They're Muslim over there. Okay, they must be reached as well. And they're going to be reached if they are there. Okay, look around where it says Nubia. 
See what it says, Hebrew, up, up, up. Abyssinia is Ethiopia, by the way. Abyssinia is Ethiopia. It's a Greek word also. Uh, okay, well, that's good. Now, let's go back. Let's go back to Isaiah 10 and 1. So what happened while we, while we were in Africa? We were mingled amongst them. We were there for a long time, okay, over a thousand years. Over a th you don't think we had sex and had babies and intermingled? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Now, read this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 1. Nope, chapter 10, oh, verse 1. Yes, sir. Chapter 10, verse 1. Now, well, now let me help you all here so you can get to historical, biblical context. It's beginning with the Assyrian Empire here. Assyria. But farther behind Assyria, you had Babylon do the same thing. Persia Media did the same thing. Greece did the same thing. Rome did the same thing. And I'm leading up to America. I, want to, so I just need y'all to understand. Uh, read verse 5 real quick for me so we understand. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 5. O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger and the stab in their hand is mine indignation. So now, Jump up to 9, verse 21. 9, verse 21. Manasseh, Ephraim, and Ephraim, Manasseh, and they together shall be against Judah. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. So the Lord was angry with northern kingdom. Northern kingdom was against us, southern kingdom, and we were against them. Now when you get to chapter 10 and verse 1, Read. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness which they have prescribed. Now it started with us. It started with us against each other. But Assyria comes into play and follow this again. Read this again. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous, unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness which they have prescribed. Now I gave you the, the, I gave you the historical context. Now I'm bringing up to what it's going into as a similitude, as a metaphor. Hold that, hold that, hold that, hold that. Give me Hosea 12 and 10 so y'all understand. I know many of you, the officers and captains, y'all understand, but I know we got new people. They don't understand the spiritual context of the Bible. The book of Hosea, chapter 12, verse 1. Nope, 10. 10. 10 verse 1. No, Hosea 12 verse 10. Sorry. Hosea chapter 12 verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. And used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. So many times when a prophet spoke, it wasn't just pertaining to one kingdom. It was referring to kingdoms that came after and after and after. Let me show you that real quick. Find me that scripture in Esdras where the Lord said, my judgments are like a ring. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Five and two? Okay, second Esdras, five and two. I need you to understand the spiritual context of the, the Bible is like no other book on earth. It was written by our ancestors under the inspiration of the most high God. First Esdras. Second Ezra's 5, 42. 42, thank you. Second Ezra, chapter 5, verse 42. And he said unto me, I will liken my judgment unto a ring. You know what it means, unto a ring? Meaning it goes round and round, on and on and on. Christ is the only one that's going to break this cycle, okay? That right there is saying the same thing in Deuteronomy, get it? 28, verse... Is it 45 or 46? I'm not looking at it. Let me hear it. It's 46, I believe. Deuteronomy Somebody. 28, verse 46. And they shall be upon thee. Read, start at 45. 45. Moreover, all these curses. All these curses. Shall come upon thee. Uh -huh. And shall pursue thee. How long? And overtake thee, till thou be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Because... Thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now what, watch what he says about those same curses. To keep his commandments and his statutes, which I command, what he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee 
For a sign. And they, these curses shall be upon thee for a sign that you're the Israelites. And for a wonder. And for a wonder. And upon thy seed forever. And upon your seed forever. So what we read in Deuteronomy 28, don't stop with Rome. It keeps going on and on and on. Everybody understand that? So now, let's go on back to Isaiah 10. Verse 1 again? Yep. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 1. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, and that right grievousness which they have prescribed. Now, the term decree is not really used in today's language. Can we look up the word decree, IT department? I want the synonyms for the word decree. Decree. I got me a little chair. Why do I feel short next to you? Damn little chair. I feel I'm all short. <laughs> Where we at? Come on, IT. Decree. An official order issued by a legal authority. Read the similar words. Order. Edict. Command. Commandment. Mandate. Now, we've been hearing that word mandate since COVID. It's a mandate. That's an unrighteous decree. Everybody understand that? Yes, Going back now, now that we understand what that word is, Isaiah 10 and 1, one more again. Isaiah 10 and 1. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness which they have prescribed. Legis legislation. Go ahead. Papal bulls. Go ahead. To turn aside the needy from judgment. That's the purpose. To turn aside the Israelites from judgment. That's with the needy. Go ahead. And to take away the right from the poor of my people. From the poor of my people. The Israelites. Go ahead. That widows may be their prey. And that they, may, that they may rob the fatherless. Now let me help you out here. Give me the precept, not precept, give me the link I sent you about Pope Nicholas. I'm going to give an example of an unrighteous decree, a mandate, a papal bull. Let's start. Pope Nicholas V. Right, now jump down to uh, papacy, where it says papacy. Go all the way down to papacy, right there. And then go to slavery. After papacy, papacy. Go, no, no, don't read it. Go down to slavery. I just want to show you it because there's a lot here. Right here. We're going to read here. Slavery. Read. In late spring of 1452, Byzantine Emperor Constantine the Eleventh wrote to Pope Nicholas for help against the impeding siege by Ottoman Sultan Mehmed II. Nicholas issued the bull, Dum Diversas, that's the name of the papal bull. It's a, a decree issued by a pope. It's called a papal, P-A-P-A-L, bull. And it was called Dum Diversus. Go ahead. 18 of June, 1452. Authorizing King Alfonso V of Portugal to attack, conquer, and subjugate Saracens, pagans, and other enemies of Christ. This is where the transatlantic slave trade started, right here under Pope Nicholas V. Read on. Wherever they may be found, issued less than a year before the fall of Constantinople, the bull may have been intended to begin another crusade against the Ottoman Empire. Read. Ownership of the Canary Islands continued to be a source of dispute between Spain and Portugal, and Nicholas was asked to settle the matter, ultimately in favor of the Portuguese. The geographical era, area of the concession given in the bowl is not explicit, but historian Richard Raiswell finds that it clearly refers to the recent discovered lands along the coast of West Africa. You see that? That papal bull referred to the recent discovered lands along the coast of West Africa. Read. Portuguese ventures were intended to complete with the Muslim Trans-Sahara caravans, which played a key role in the highly profitable Muslim slave trade and also held a monopoly on West African gold and ivory. The Portuguese claimed to ter territorial rights along the African coast by virtue of having invested time and treasure in discovering it. The Castilian claim was based on their being the heirs of the Visigoth, in 1454, a fleet of caravels from Seville and Cadiz 
traded along the African coast and upon their return were intercepted by a Portuguese squadron. Enrique IV of Castile threatened war. Alfonso V appealed to the Pope for moral support of Portugal's right to a monopoly of trade in lands she discovered. The Papal Bull, Romanist Pontifice, issued on 8th of January, 1454, 1455. 1455, excuse me. Endorsed Portu Portuguese possession of Certia. Cuerta. Cuerta, which they, also, they already held, and the exclusive right to trade, navigation, and fishing in the discovered lands, and reaffirmed the previous dumb diversus. It granted permission to Afonso and his heirs to, quote, make purchases and sales of any things and goods and victuals whatsoever, as it may seem fit, with any Saracens and infidels in said regions, provided they be not iron instruments, wood used for con construction, cordage, ships, and any kinds of armor. Mm -hmm. The bull conferred exclusive trading rights to the Portuguese between Morocco and the Indies with the rights to conquer and convert the inhabitants a significant concession given by Nicholas in a brief issue to King Alfonso in 1454 extended the rights granted to existing territories to all those that might be taken in the future. Consistent with these broad aims, it also allowed the Portuguese, quote, to invade, search out, capture, vanquish, and subdue all Saracens and pagans whatsoever and other enemies of Christ wheresoever placed and the kingdoms, dukedoms, principalities, dominions, possessions, and all movable and immovable goods, whatsoever held and possessed by them, and to reduce their persons to perpetual slavery. You see that? So this orchestrated the transatlantic slave trade. Let's go on back now. So this, go back to Isaiah 10 and 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 10, verse 1. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, and that right grievousness which they have de described. Give me the next book by Arnoldus Montanus. Arnoldus Montanus. Give me that book. Okay, now let's go inside the book. And I want to highlight an area. Read that. Is it on your screen that you got? No, sir. All right, All right there it goes. The Portuguese that dwelt on this island and formed the Nether Netherlanders. Netherlands, Land of Netherlanders, that few lived above 50 years there. Talking about Africa. Yet, notwithstanding, the great gain tempted them to, kiss, to tarry several of them having two or 300 Negroes that worked in the sugar mills. So when the whites were going there, they couldn't last longer than 50 years. They kept dying. That's what he's talking about. Go ahead. That John III, king of Portugal sent a colony thither above 200 years before, whom through the un unwholesome air destroyed. Yet the place was not left desolate, for he sent new inhabitants. He sent new slaves, go ahead. Who first settled in Guinea. Who first settled, these slaves went to Guinea, go ahead. Next in Angola. Angola. And lastly, on the island St. Thomas. We just saw the map of who these people are, go ahead. That so they might be the better used to the to, air. To the air. That the said king sold all those Jews. Sold for what? All those Jews. All those what? All those Jews. Read. For slaves. For slaves in Africa. This is what the scholars know. Go ahead. That they keep secret from blacks and Latinos. Go ahead. That refuse to embrace the Roman religion. So if our people that were in Spain and Portugal did not accept Christianity... They made us slaves. That's what they did. Go ahead. And caused their children to be baptized, from whom coming thither in great numbers. In the millions. Go ahead. Most of the present inhabitants were de descended. Most of the present inhabitants were descended from those Jews. Does everybody understand that? Sure. Give me the next, give me the link. Five major African tribes. Five major. Now, there are many more, but this video focuses only on five major ones. Five major African tribes. Eight.
Hey, those writings are good to show why you Negroes are dying to get baptized in the church, and you don't even know what it means or cares. Okay? That's from forced customs from your enemies. And that's why y'all want it done, even when we show you in the scriptures that John the Baptist said, Christ must increase, he must decrease. Yep. All right, let's see the video. Five major African tribes that were taken away during the Atlantic Can you slave raise it up trade. To hear it? The Yoruba people were taken from modern day Nigeria and Republic of Benin to countries such as Brazil, Cuba, and Trinidad and Tobago. The Igbo people, also from Nigeria, were taken to Barbados, Haiti, and Jamaica before being shipped to North America. The Akan people, primarily from present day Ghana, were taken to Brazil, Jamaica, and Trinidad and Tobago. The Congo people, from the region encompassing modern-day Angola, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and the Republic of Congo, were taken to Brazil, Cuba, and Haiti. Lastly, the Mandinka people, from countries such as Senegal, Guinea, and Mali, were taken to countries such as Brazil and the United States. These tribes endured unimaginable suffering and displacement as a result of the transatlantic slave trade, with their descendants now scattered across the Americas and beyond. Now, watch this. Now, what happened to us? Give me the next video. Buck breaking. I want that next video. Pay very close attention. Mm -mm. We ready? Buck. Buck breaking was mainly utilized in the Caribbean. It was used against enslaved men who were seen as defiant. The process included forcing the male slave to bend over a tree stump, drop trowel, expose his bear behind while it is propped in the air. The slave was then flogged to tenderize the flesh for the sodomy that followed multiple times. This form of punishment was done in full view of the slave family and friends to instill fear in the hopes to prevent future rebellion. Men of bondage who were victims of this inhumane, sadistic, homoerotic, emasculating punishment often ran away from the plantations or killed themselves as the humiliation was much too strong to overcome. The sodomy was often performed by a white man who traveled from plantation to plantation to rape male slaves. Sex farms allowed multiple slave owners to gang rape male slaves as punishment for any supposed wrongdoing. Homosexuality in this era was not a popular pastime, yet raping male slaves as a form of plantation punishment was somehow acceptable. Buck breaking is typically left out of the history books due to its taboo nature of male on male rape. Society has ignored any testimony to male on male rape until only recently. Sexual violence used to project fear can be a powerful tool of manipulation. Weaponizing sexuality can debilitate one's core self-esteem and disable their sense of community. Buck breaking was a means to squash rebellion before it was even conceptualized. Families of the enslaved Bucks were forced to bear witness to the sodomy, ensuring there was no will to be defiant or rebellious. Sexual mutilation, including castration, were other forms of punishment for those with stronger will. These acts solidified the mental dominance white men needed to tame their Bucks into obedient, working slaves. Emasculating male slaves physically was the final step to subdue the defiant buck. I bet you never taught that in school. What are you going to say about that, Deacon Asa? You, this is crazy because you're learning this now to show you the nature of the white man. 
And you got black men using this now to demasculinize black men. You ever notice now that there's a big thing now for black men to call other men gay? You notice that? You notice that there's men pushing that now because they saw that the white man used that to humiliate and bring another man down. So you're going to notice now a lot more black men who want positions of power accusing other men of being gay. I read about that in uh, uh, some writings of King James. There was a constant rumor calling him gay. And it's the same thing that you see today. You see men trying to be in position of power to demasculinize other black men that have power. But we now we see where it came from. It came from the white man. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> Give me uh, the false prophet, the pope. Yep, I said the false prophet. The false prophet. Not, it's not just the pope. It's the whole Christianity, all of it. I need the next video. I want you all to pay close attention. Come on, yo. Y ser homosexual no es un delito. Es una condición humana. Somos todos hijos de Dios. Y Dios nos quiere como estamos y con la fuerza que luchamos cada uno por nuestra dignidad. El ser homosexual no es un delito. No es un delito. Sí, pero es pecado. Bueno, primero, distingamos pecado por delito. Bishop, can we start pero también es pecado yes. la falta de calidad con el prójimo. Okay. Start ves? again. Start again. I know you're not reading that stuff. It's very small, fine print. Listen. Play it. Being, being homosexual isn't a crime. Y ser homosexual no es un delito. Es una condición It's humana. a human condition. We're Son all children of God. Dios. And God loves us as we are. And for the strength that each one of us has to fight for our dignity. Being homosexual is not a crime. It's not a crime. Let's make the distinction first between sin and crime. But it's also a sin to lack charity with one another. So what about that? That's your pope. That is the Christian religion. This is why Christians don't really speak against LGBT. They speak against us, though, but not against homosexuality. Uh, so what happened as a result of the pope making that unrighteous decree? Let's go to Uganda. What happened with Uganda? I want the video about Uganda. What happened? A deep sense of shock and fear engulfs Uganda's LGBTQ community. Their way of life turned on its head after Tuesday's anti-homosexuality bill was passed in parliament. The new law has drawn the ire of the Western world. It would impinge upon universal human rights, jeopardize progress in the fight against HIV AIDS, Human rights chiefs, meanwhile, argue the bill could give license to incite harm upon one another. It will render lesbian, gay and bisexual people in Uganda criminals simply for, for being who they are and for existing. Under the bill, people caught having gay sex would face life in prison. So-called aggravated homosexuality, used to describe gay sex committed without consent or against children, would be punishable by death. The legislation also outlaws even identifying as LGBTQ inciting fear from rights advocates. I don't know if there are going to be concentration camps or rehabilitation centers that are so uh, discriminatory because many people are going to be internally displaced. Uganda was already notorious for intolerance of homosexuality, which has been criminalized since the colonial era. Discussions leading up to the vote were also laced with homophobic rhetoric as lawmakers conflated sexual abuse with consensual same-sex activity between adults. We are making to reinforce the law enforcement officers to make sure that homosexuals have no space in Uganda. It's a position reflected on the streets of Kampala, as many locals on Wednesday expressed their support for the bill. God created man and woman, and we cannot accept one sex to, to go on, a, on the same sex. It is okay. Because I can't see a, such a child of mine doing such a thing. 
The new legislation will now be sent to President Yoweri Museveni, who will choose whether to sign it into law. But some analysts say Uganda's leader may prove reluctant to repeat history and avoid damaging his country's reputation in the eyes of foreign investors and donors. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. You know what's so... Let me tell you, these people make me sick to my stomach. You know what's so sick about this? Why is that they're only pushing this in, Afri in the African right. countries? They're pushing it on every... Si Listen, that LBGT, whatever the hell you want to call it, that's the new birth control today. That... So, let me tell you how, 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 how hypocrisy this, the white man is. Let's just talk about Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. America buy billions of dollars of oil from Saudi Arabia every year. Saudi Arabia law is harsher than Uganda. Right. Way harsher. Nobody say nothing. Everybody's like, shh, don't say nothing about that. Mm -hmm. But they want to go to the black country, right. push that garbage. But they're still trading with Saudi Arabia. They're still buying oil from them. Mm -hmm. Qatar, that's another country. Right. Iran. Iran, that's another country. Iraq. Iraq. Mm -hmm. Why is that in the black country they're pushing that garbage? Right. That's a way to destroy us. Mm -hmm. You got to see the hypocrisy of these people, man. And they're saying, because once the Pope put that out, now America is enforced to enforce yep. What the Pope says. Now, they all work together. These, the, the false prophet, the beast system, they all work together. We got to wake up and realize what time we're in. Look at Isaiah 5 and 20 real quick. Because now somebody watching might say, oh, yeah, what Uganda did is an unrighteous decree. We can use Isaiah uh, uh, 10. No, no, that was a righteous decree. Watch what God says in Isaiah 5 and 20. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Woe unto them. That call evil good. Woe unto them that call evil good. And good evil. And good evil. That's what they do. They say what Uganda is doing is evil. Oh, no, 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 it's not. What Uganda said is according to God's law. You have to decide. They, they, you have to decide whose side you're on. God's side or Satan's side. The choice is yours. Okay. Um, and also, like the bishop is bringing out, because... The churches that will never have a discussion like this, they'll never push that this type of information out for you to look and be on God's side. Watch this. Give me Isaiah chapter 1, verse 9. This is why the bishop is bringing this out. And this is proof that the Lord is working with specific men on this earth and other people, they are of their father, the devil. This is why the bishop is bringing this out. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 9. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. That's what we are. We are a very small remnant in comparison to the millions of other different religious denominations on the earth. Read on. We should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. What the Pope would have pushed, it would have spread everywhere. But God left a small remnant to make sure that the people of God don't get caught up in this foolishness of the world. Y'all understand that, right? Now, what did America do as a result of Uganda saying no? They put sanctions on Uganda. Give me that video. They put sanctions. They didn't put no sanctions on Saudi Arabia. They didn't put no sanctions on Kuwait or Afghanistan or Iran or Iraq. But they do it to the black countries. South Africa accepted that thing. Okay. You got the video for me? Come on. No continent globally has borne the brand of sanctions by the United States, the European Union and the United Nations like Africa. Both the UN and the EU are multilateral organizations. But the US in most instances acts unilaterally, pursuing its own geostrategic interests. What we have are uh, you know, unilateral sanctions regimes that don't have very clear exit strategies. They don't have clear benchmarks or indicators for their own success. Currently, the U.S. has targeted individuals and companies in at least nine African countries, among them the Central African Republic, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Sudan and Zimbabwe, whose sanctions date back two decades. The U.S. says its sanctions against Zimbabwe target specific government officials and entities, 
it accuses of undermining democratic institutions or processes. But Zimbabwe's current president says the sanctions have devastated his country's economy, imposing a huge burden on ordinary people. My country's citizens have fallen victim to this indiscriminate weapon of mass destruction. The Office of Foreign Assets Control under the U.S. Department of Treasury is responsible for administering sanctions. It deploys instruments such as the blocking of assets, travel and trade restrictions Pause made right possible. There. The blocking of assets, trade restrictions, travel, that's what sanctions include. So they hit nine African countries. Play on. Well, because of its influence on the global financial system. The latest African countries to come under the threat of U.S. sanctions are Sudan over the country's current conflict and Uganda after a new LGBTQ law came into force. In a statement released by the White House on Uganda on the 29th of May, U.S. President Joe Biden warned the U.S. was considering additional steps, including the application of sanctions and restriction of entry into the United States against anyone involved. Uganda's president has shrugged off the threat. If they interfere with our trade, we shall trade with others. According to experts, for sanctions to be effective, the U.S. should adopt a different approach. It should do away with its bilateral or a unilateral approach towards sanctions and try and move this into a more multilateral domain and seek the legitimacy and credibility provided to it by the United Nations, by other multilateral bodies. Such a move, experts say, would make the sanctions more effective and credible. But with the U.S. being the most influential member of the global community, it's highly unlikely and it will continue to act unilaterally. But for Africa to deal with the unintended consequences of sanctions, experts say it must engage in proper diplomatic lobbying. Robert Nagela, CGTN, Nairobi, Kenya. So what I want you to these sanctions, which forbid you to trade, forbid you to travel or do business. That's what the Bible's going into. Give me that in Revelation 13. We're talking about it right now in terms of sanctions on countries. Revelation 13, 16. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. What's the mark, brothers? Sin. Sin. That's the mark. Go ahead. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast. Or the number of his name. So you got to accept America's unrighteous decrees. You got to accept their policies, their mandates, or they will cut you off from buying and selling, meaning trade. We just we're looking at it in real time with Uganda. Okay, they didn't get down to our people yet. They're gonna wait till they get set that digital currency in, in force to get the rest of us here. But this is what the Bible's talking about. Everybody understand that? Give me what's happening now in Uganda, CBN. Watch. As a result, watch what just happens in Uganda now. It ain't no coincidence. It ain't no accident. Come on, y'all. CBN video. Come on, y'all. This week, while much news attention focused on that missing submarine and Hunter Biden, some tragic news from half a world away caught our attention. It's a story that is difficult to report because it's about children in Uganda. At 10 p.m. on June 16th, Christian students at the Mpandwe Secondary Boarding School prepared for bedtime. One neighbor said she heard the children singing a gospel song before sleep. But suddenly murderous mayhem erupted as they were attacked in their beds by machete-wielding rebels, members of the Allied Democratic Forces. But the ADF is anything but democratic. They are brutal and evil Islamic State-affiliated terrorists. Witnesses overheard them shout Allahu Akbar as they proceeded to slaughter 41 people, including 37 children. Six children were kidnapped. Male students were locked inside their dormitory and burned alive. 
as the building was set afire. And Pondwe is a Ugandan border town beside the Democratic Republic of Congo. Based in the DRC's North Kivu province, the ADF crossed over the border and launched their planned attack against that Ugandan school. Folks, a year and a half ago, after a bombing in Kampala, the machine gun preacher, missionary Sam Childers, warned us that the ADF would spread more terror throughout the region. They just want to try to take over the uh, the country. I believe that they want to put a threat there so maybe they can get some leeway. They're almost, almost cowardless, thoughtless, loveless people. All they want to do is kill. And it reminds me of Joseph Kony. As he did in response to Joseph Kony in the Lord's Resistance Army, President Museveni has pledged to send Uganda's UDF troops to the border region to defeat the ADF. I interviewed Museveni and many of the LRA victims years ago in Uganda, and it took 20 years to defeat Kony and the LRA. Uganda will need help if the country is to be successful this time. Donald Trump, American troops, and allies defeated the Islamic Caliphate in Syria. But ISIS splinter groups are now operating worldwide, especially in Africa. If the United States can help Ukrainians in their struggle against Russia, why not help our African ally, Uganda? We must do what we can to prevent more innocent Ugandan children from being slaughtered in their beds at night in the name of Allah. Well, that's it today from the Global Lane. Be sure to follow us on the CBN News and NRB channels, YouTube, Twitter, SoundCloud, iTunes, and our broadcast affiliates. Well, and until right. next time... Is that a coincidence? No. That right after they refuse homosexuality, no. now rebel forces are attacking them. Yep. And they need America's help. You can't make this stuff up. It always happens. Now it's just the same thing in Nigeria. Yep. When they rejected it, then Boko Haram comes killing people, women and kids. It's the same tactic. And remember Obama said we won't help you, uh, Nigeria Dang. unless they accept LGBT. Yep. What are you going to say? What are y'all going to say? Uh, hey. Listen, you say, when, I, when you say Esau is the devil, Esau is the devil. First of all, Africa don't need Esau help. There is 54 countries in the continent. They got their own military. Why don't they come together and go and defend Uganda? And when they're talking about sanction, why, you, why I got all the resources in my house, you're going to put sanction on me? I got all the resources in my house that, 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 that you need. You, mean, you need my resources, but you put sanction on me. That makes absolutely no sense. Without me, you cannot survive, but you put sanction on me. That's showing you how evil these people are. They, listen, they, Africa don't need U.S. for nothing. They need Africa. Africa don't need them. But they make Africa believe, no, you need us. No. Africa don't need U.S., they can trade between themselves. Hey, that's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Get that real quick. This is what we're dealing with here. And only men on a spiritual level can understand and see these things as they unfold. Okay? Most of you look at the individuals before you. But this is on a spiritual level. And this is what we are being warned about in the scriptures. Read that. The book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is the high courts of these uh, nations doing these things to people on the earth to destroy them. And if you're not looking at it through spiritual eyes, you're going to get caught up in the destruction. This is what you see in unfolding. Now, we're doing in there. Let me show you something. Give me the article by the Jerusalem Post. Watch this. Now, this article was put out in 2018. Okay, uh, let's read this. Pay very close attention. It all ties together. Watch this. The Jerusalem Post. UN staff allegedly responsible for over 60,000 cases of sexual exploitation. Mm. Go ahead. The charities have a higher than normal obligation to ensure they do everything they possibly can in training, prevention, and detection and critically prosecution. Mm -hmm. Hey, pause it right there. Go back down. Move that little thing. Let me pull it down. No. Uh, down. Yeah. New, can we look at UNICEF? Some of us might not know what UNICEF is, what it stands for. 
Can we look that up? UNICEF. U-N-I-C-E-F. UNICEF. UNICEF. Come on. UNICEF. UNICEF. All right. Uh, read that. Uh, the Wikipedia? Uh, that one on the right. Yes, sir. UNICEF, originally called the United Nations Inter International Children's Emergency Fund in full. Now officially, United Nations Children's Fund is an agency of the United Nations responsible for providing humanitarian and developmental aid to children worldwide. So that's, but when there's like turmoil or catastrophes, disease, UNICEF comes in to the rescue. Let's go back to the article. Just watch, pay, pay attention. Read that under the picture. Displaced Iraqi boys enter a tent school set by United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, at Hammam al-Ali, camp south of Mosul, Iraq. Okay, now read the next part. UN staff have carried out thousands of rapes and other sexual violations. Wait, 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 wait. Read that again. Y'all just missed it. Go ahead. UN staff have carried out thousands of rapes and other, other sexual violations against women and children over the last decade, according to a former senior United Nations official. Now, they're supposed to be helping oh, the yeah. children. Mm -hmm. they raping the children. The United Nations staff is out there on a... It's, oh, hey, they come to help us. No, they come to rape your, your butt. The hell is this? Read on. Quote, there are tens of thousands of aid workers around the world with pedophile tendencies. This is where pedophiles go. Yep. Go join UNICEF. We could, get up, we could get away with it. Read it again, read it again, read it again. There are tens of thousands of aid workers around the world with pedophile tendencies. But if you wear a UNICEF t-shirt, nobody will ask what you're up to. You see that? Nobody ask no question. That's a part of UNICEF. Go ahead. Andrew Macleod. The former chief of operations at the UN's Emergency Coordination Center said in an interview with British tabloid The Sun on Monday, adding that an estimated 60,000 cases of sexual exploitation had been committed over the last decade by 3,300 pedophiles. 3,300 pedophiles working in the organization. Do y'all see that? Yes, sir. So now, give me the next article. This year. By the way, they all Christian. Go ahead, say it on the mic. Nobody can hear you. They all Christian. They all Christian. They all Christian. Believe now, that. Read this. Go back to the title. The European Conservative. The report makes no mention of the parents' role, let alone rights, in their children their underage children child's decision making regarding his or her sexual opinion. Now that y'all see the, the, when it was printed, April 25th, 2023. That's this year, two months ago. Raise it up. According to the UN, nothing should stand in the way of minors having sexual intercourse with adults as long as the former consent. Do y'all see the evil? Am I the only one that see the evil? They're supposed to go, number one, they were supposed to prosecute those 60,000. Now they're making rules to justify... If a child consents, you know how easy it is to make a child consent? Let me, let me tell you something, especially women with kids. You know how you give a kid a toy or candy, and you, your words, are you happy? And the child goes, yeah, I'm happy. Do you want me to make you more happy? Yeah, I want you to make me. Oh, that's consent. That is consent. That's what they do with toddlers. That's what they do, these evil, wicked Christians. And Bishop. A lot of the kids that that happened to, you don't hear it till they're like 20s, 30s, right. 40s. They say they realize it was wrong. At that time, it was done to them. They went along with it, which was nothing. But as they get older and they mature, they start saying something was wrong about what they did as a child. And then they psychologically damage or they're right. trying to uh, pursue the person who did it to them. Right. And who's the number one group that hides these pedophiles, these rapists, these molesters? The church. The Catholic Church, they have the, they have the highest accusations of that.
God. And all they do is just move the pedophile from one parish to another. Let that ever come up inside the Israelite community. What will happen? The Negroes in the Israelite community will be attacking. Okay? It's happening with Esau. There's no Negro speaking out about it. Exactly. Go back to the article. Read it again. According to the UN, nothing should stand in the way of minors having sexual intercourse with adults as long as the former consent. The United Nations International Committee of Jurists, ICJ, the intergovernmental organization's principal judicial organ, has unveiled a new set of proposals for legal principles. If its recommendations see implement implementation, these would presumably do away with regulations on minimum age requirements for sexual relations and pave the way for pedophilia's decriminalization. Y'all see this? This, this, this? this is outrageous. This is crazy. Go ahead. The quote, eight March principles released on International Women's Day propose a human rights-based approach to laws criminalizing behavior related to sex, drug use, sexual and reproductive health, homelessness, and poverty. Quote, criminal law is among the harshest of tools at the disposal of the state to inver ex exert control over individuals. As such, it ought to be a measure of last resort. However, globally, there has been a growing trend toward overcriminalization. ICJ Law and Policy Director Ian Schreiderman explains in a press release. Quote, we must acknowledge that these laws not only violate human rights, but the fundamental principles of criminal law themselves, he added. Okay, so y'all can read the rest of the article on y'all. I just wanted y'all to see that they're attempting to decriminalize pedophilia and pedophiles, pedophiles fill UNICEF. They fill that place. That's where they run to. Now, give me uh, Romans 9, 20. Isaiah 3 and 9. Let's start there. Isaiah 3 and 9. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 9. The show of their countenance doth witness against them, mm -hmm. and they declare their sin as Sodom. They declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. They don't hide it now. Now they don't want to hide it. Go ahead. Woe unto their soul. Woe unto their soul. For they have rewarded evil unto themselves. They're rewarding evil to themselves. We never perpetrate violence or harm to anybody. God says they're bringing violence and harm to themselves, judgment to themselves. Romans 9, 27, please. Book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 27. Hold on, let me get it. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. A remnant of our people is prophesied to be saved. Read on. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness. God is going to cut it short in righteousness. Go ahead. Because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Now, he's saying it's a short work. To us, it seems long. But he says, listen, it's only a short work. Go ahead. And as Isaiah said. And as Isaiah said. Said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth. Sabaoth means host. Except the Lord of hosts. Had left us a seed. That's what Deacon Asaph went over earlier in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 9. That's the quote. We had been as Sodom and been made like unto Gomorrah. So except the Lord had left the remnant that believed, studied, practiced his word, we would all have been as Sodom and as Gomorrah. Okay. Give me Romans chapter 1, 25 to 27. Paul spoke about this in detail here. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 25. Mm -hmm. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? The white man. Got and it. worship and serve the creature more than the creator. Why? What happened? We started to follow the customs, the decrees of the white man. We started to worship his image. Read it again. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? And worship and serve the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. We serve the creature, which is this white man, more than a creator. Anything the white man says, many of our people follow it. Okay? Any decree he puts out, our people follow it. Opposed to following what God says in the Holy Bible. Go ahead. For this cause, God gave them up 
unto vile affections. Mm -hmm. For even their woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Talking about lesbians. Leaving the natural use of the women, which is to be with a man and to bear children. They said, no, we don't want that. We don't want that. Go ahead. And likewise, also the men. They don't leave you men out either. It says, likewise, also the men. Go ahead. Leaving the natural use of the woman. I don't want no woman. I don't want to bring forth children. Homosexuality is about depopulate, depopulation. Go ahead. Burn in their lust, one toward another. Uh -huh. Men with men. Men with men. Working that which is unseemly mm -hmm. and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error. Which was meat. Recompense means judgment. Receiving in themselves that judgment of their error. The word error there means sin. Which was meat. The word meat there means good or right. Let's, let's look at that again. And receiving in themselves that judgment of their sin. Which was right or good. That's where AIDS comes from. Disease. Death. That's what it's going into. That was verse 27. Yes, sir. Give me 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. The book and of when you have those type of spirits on you, what you tend to do is accuse everybody of having that spirit. Mm -hmm. You're gay, and you're gay, and you got molested. This is what homosexuals do. I believe all of you are gay. You're a purple faggot. You're gay. Yeah, you're gay, and you're gay, and you're gay, and he's gay. He got molested. Yay! That's what homosexuals tend to do. And if they're not engaged in the act, they're fighting with the thought. So to, the way to deal with the thought is to attack everybody else. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's how they suppress it, because it takes the light off them. Just like that, um, what's that of a guy, the funny guy, he likes to interview people. I think his last name is Peterson, and it just came out that he was sleeping with some white men. Uh, you know him, Bishop. Yes, and all of a sudden you got a whole bunch of white men saying, look, this guy paid me to have sex with him. Damn. First Corinthians 6 or 9. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Listen good, listen good. This is the message, not just to our people following the unrighteous decree of the LGBT community, but to any other sins that are out there. Watch what Paul says in Christ. Go ahead. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, mm -hmm. nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. That effeminate, you girly boys. Go ahead. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. That's the LGBT community. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. You cannot inherit the kingdom of God if you are conformed to the decrees of this world. All of us must be trans. Formed. Go ahead. And such were some of you. See that? But you are washed. See that part? But you are washed. I mean, but you are transformed now. Go ahead. But you are sanctified. Mm -hmm. But you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Now write this down, write this down, write this down. The Bible provides the instructions for repairing our broken people. The Bible provides the instructions for repairing our broken people. Now we started off in the beginning talking about the carpenters in the book of Zechariah. Okay, carpenters are mentioned in the New Testament. Carpenters that rebuild Israel are spoken of in the New Testament. Get Luke 4.18. The book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Talking about the poor in spirit of Israel. Go ahead. He hath sent me. Hey, give me that precept to explain the poor, Isaiah 14, 32. Because there's some new people right now saying the poor is anybody that's broke. It ain't talking about that. Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 32. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? That the Lord hath founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it. The Lord hath founded Zion. Zion is another name for Israel. And the poor of his people 
shall trust. And everybody understand that. So when we go back to Luke 4 and verse 18 again. This is what Christ says. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath appointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Heal the brokenhearted. I mean, our minds are broken. Go ahead. To preach deliverance to the captives. We are the captive people, the captive nation. Go ahead. And recovering of sight to the blind. We are the blind who can't see the word of God, understand the word of God. Go ahead. To set at liberty them that are bruised. We are the ones that are bruised, bruised in mind, spirit, and soul and body. Go ahead. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Mark 12, verse 10. Mark 12, verse 10. Mark chapter 12, verse 10. Watch what Christ said about the religious leaders, the biblical leaders that were meant to build us up in spirit. Watch what he says. The book of Mark chapter 12, verse 10. And have ye not read the scripture, the stone which the builders rejected? The stone. Who the stone, brothers? The stone which the builders, the builders rejected. The builders were the scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees. Why, would, why did Christ call them the builders? Because they were meant to build us. They were meant to build us mentally and spiritually. Build us psychologically. But they rejected the king. Read it again. The stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner. Christ, regardless of them rejecting him, has become the leader. He is the commander in chief. What verse was that? Verse 10, sir. That was verse 10. From there, from there. Give me 1 Corinthians 3. Let's start at verse 6. The book of 1 Corinthians. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me get it. Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 6. Watch this. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 6. Watch what Paul says. I have planted. I have planted. Apollos watered. Apollos came behind Paul and watered the believers. But God gave the increase. God is the only one that can increase you. Increase you in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Increase you with terms of brothers and sisters repenting. Only God can do that. Only he has the key to unlock the broken soul. Go ahead. So then... Neither is he that planteth anything. Paul said, I'm not nothing. Go ahead. Neither he that water. He said, Apollos is not nothing. But God that giveth the increase. Because without God, we can do nothing. He's the one that gives the increase. Go ahead. Now he that planteth. He that planteth. And he that watereth are one. We are one in one spirit. The one that teaches first and foremost, and he that comes behind and waters the flock are in one spirit. Go ahead. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Yeah, I want you men to understand that. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Go ahead. For we are laborers together with God. We are labor laborers together with God. Go ahead. Ye are God's husbandry. You are God. Husbandry means planting. You are God's planting. Ye are God's building. Ye are all God's building. Watch this. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me. The Apostle Paul. As a wise master builder. As a what? As a wise master builder. Those were the carpenters. Those were the carpenters we read earlier in Zechariah. Daniel, the three Hebrews, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, uh, Judah Maccabees and his brothers. Christ, the twelve apostles and Paul. Mordecai, Esther. You understand? Read that again, verse 10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. Read. I have laid the foundation. So as a wise master builder, we laid a foundation in Christ. Go ahead. And another build it thereon. And Apollos came and built it thereon, which is the rest of us. Go ahead. But let every man take heed how he build it thereon. Now, let me show, explain, explain the foundation. Hold that precept right there. Give me Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20. The book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Our foundation is built upon the prophets and holy apostles. And we must understand that Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. He is the king. He is the Lord. 
He is the commander in chief. Everybody understand that? Yes, Read it one more again. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Was that the whole verse? Yes, sir. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 3 and 10. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. All of us, I want you men to understand that we must all gear ourselves to becoming wise master builders. In other word, carpenters. How to build men. How to build women. We got to learn that according to the scriptures. Read. I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon, thereupon. For another foundation. For other. For other foundation. And no man lay that then that is laid. Read it again. I'm confused. Read it again. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus Christ. So Christ must be the foundation that is laid down. That's the rock that we have built it upon. He's the foundation first and foremost, the chief cornerstone. Go ahead. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, gold, silver, silver, precious stones, precious stones, wood, wood, hay, stubble. Now let me explain that verse right there. We all want to be, let me explain the gold. Give me Ecclesiasticus 2 and 5. The book of Sirach, chapter 2, verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire, mm -hmm. and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. You men and you women, in order to become the gold in this truth, you got to go through adversity. Why? Adversity builds character. Adversity builds and molds personality, okay, to conform us into the image of Christ. That's what adversity does, okay? Now, that's the gold. Let me show you the silver. Give me Isaiah 125. Because in order to prove that you believe these words that the Lord has given us, you must go through fire, which is adversity. Go ahead, Isaiah 125. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 25. And I will turn my hand upon thee. And I will turn my hand upon thee. And purely purge. And purely purge. Away thy dross. Thy dross. Thy dross. Hey, can we look up that word dross? Because we don't use that word today. Dross. D-R-O-S-S. -S. What does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? Let's look up that word. Read that. Read that. Dross. Something regarded as worthless. Rubbish. Mm -hmm. So you know what's worthless? You know what's rubbish in every one of us? Sin. Lying. Thievery. Covetousness. Hatred. Murder. Drug use. Drug abuse. Lesbianism. Homosexuality. That's dross. You going to say something, sir? He didn't finish the definition, and it's going to go into why you use gold okay you left off the part where it says in particular scum formed on the surface of molten metal meaning once it's melted down the dross is the leftovers that uh take away from its purity we have things inside of us that take us away from being the men and women that god wants us to be so god he's given the analogy the similitude of metal being melted down and the impurities being pushed out He's melting us down, and he's pushing the sin out. So that's why I said finish the, the end of that. That's where you get the similar to. Right. All praise. Isaiah 125 again. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 25. And I will turn my hand upon thee, and purely purge away thy dross, and take away all thy tin. See, the tin that's in it. That tin, that dross. Hey, Mark 7, 25 real quick. Mark 7, 21. I'm sorry. Mark 7, 21. Christ told us what's inside everyone. Some of you men, some of you women deny it. No, no, no. I ain't got nothing wrong with me. Use a liar. As soon as I hear you say that, use a liar. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye. Blasphemy, pride, foolishness, 
All these evil things come from within and defile the man. So the son of God, he told us what's in every one of us. Some of those sins are at the top. Some of those sins we keep subdued, but it's there. In order to get rid of that, we got to go through adversity. Yeah, we study the Bible. We see what it says, but now it's testing time. That's when you go through adversity. What you going to do now? What you going to do? Adultery is presented. What you going to do? You going to apply thou shalt not commit adultery or will you give in? Okay. You mad. You mad as hell. Will you commit? Uh, will you break thou shalt not kill or will you, uh, will you break that? You, the testing must come. So go back to Isaiah 1. Hey, Bishop, yes. let me add. That's why a lot of you, you watch online. You'll never, ever come to the school or you come to visit. You'll make every excuse. Because when you're by yourself or you're in the world, those things will never, ever be pointed out. No one ever point out adultery, drug use, pedophilia, anger, thievery, nobody in the world you're accepted. But when you come to a body that's practicing these things that a Paul said, had I not known sin except the law said, now you're in an environment where the law is. Now you stick out like a sore thumb. So what you rather do? You get mad at them. You give a reason why you want to leave. You say, they did this to me, they did that to me. Like that uh, nigger woman that you saw burning the shirt. As soon as she's gone, she's in pants, long eyelashes, uh, uh, burning a shirt with scriptures on it. But she had to find some reason to say that the body did something to her. She made up stuff. They made me pour out my water. They said I couldn't wear makeup. I asked the whole congregation, has anybody ever told you you can't bring water in? You can't make up makeup? So she goes to a place now where laws are not being applied to complain, and they embrace her. Okay? Make us look like the bad guy. Go on social media and make things up. But the people who are not keeping God's laws, they'll embrace her. Y'all got to see it for what it is. Go ahead, Bishop. Read that again. Isaiah 125. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 25. And I will turn my hand upon thee, and purely purge away thy dross, and take away all thy tent. And I will restore thy judges as at the first. See what the Lord wants to do? Restore our judges as at the beginning. Go ahead. And thy counselors as at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. See that? Now, let's go on back. Where was we at initially? Why did I go there? I First Corinthians 3. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 3. That's it. That's it. And 12. Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. Now, if any man... Wait a minute. There's a scripture that popped in my mind. I'm trying to think. Where the Lord uses... I think it might be is it Zechariah 13, oh. where it talks about silver. So, hold on. Let me look. Hey, somebody talk. He yes. says he's going to bring us through the fire, that one. Oh. 13 and 9. Is that it? Refined as silver is refined? Yeah, that's it. The book of Zechariah, chapter 13, verse 9. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined. See that? Go ahead. And will try them as gold is tried. But that's what the Lord's looking for, gold and silver. Go ahead. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, the Lord is my God. Ah, that's some good stuff right there. But back to 1 Corinthians 3 and 12. One more again. Watch this. Listen good. Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stone. Pause. Building upon Christ, the foundation is Christ, the prophets, and holy apostles. Y'all with me, right? You build upon that. You get gold, men and women, silver. Men and women, precious stones like diamonds, things of that nature. But then notice what it says. Stones, wood, hay, and stubble. If we talk about Christ or any Israelite congregation talks about Christ, the apostles, the holy prophets, but they don't enforce God's laws in the body, you will have liars there. You have thieves, you have homosexuals, you have adultery, you have child molestation, m murder, hatred, slander. Those are the type of things that will be in that congregation. Why? Because nobody's forcing or enforcing God's laws upon you. Nobody's disciplining you. 
If you sin, you got to go. We'll bring you back in some time, okay? There's no judgments at all. So everybody stays in their sin. So read that again, verse 12, please. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, mm -hmm. every man's work shall be made manifest. Mm -hmm. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. Now, the fire goes into adversity, first and foremost, and then a literal fire. Later on, not now, but later on. Right now, all this is spiritual. That, those, ad, those trials of adversities, those testing times, that's what that fire is going into. Go ahead. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So the fire is going to try you. It's going to test you to see what type of man, what type of woman you are. What type of teachers we are that bring out these truths. Go ahead. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. So if you are teaching men and women to be the gold, the silver, and the precious stones, you shall have a reward. Read that again. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. We all want that reward. We all want to be able to endure the fire, the trials of adversity that is destined to come. Go ahead. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. The ones that's burned goes back to the stones, the wood, the hay, and stubble. Those are the men and women that stay in their sin. Those are the men and women that can continue being a liar, being a thief, a whoremonger, an adulterer, a child molester, a thief, a murderer, a slanderer. Read that again. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, mm -hmm. but he himself shall be saved. Yet so as by fire. Because we're teaching you, right? It's up to you to apply it. You men understand that? We are giving you the perfect gospel. It's up to you whether or not you apply them laws. You men and women, some of you leave, walk out them doors, and you become, uh, remember the dude in North Carolina that drove hours to meet the 13-year-old girl? Yes, he was a pedophile. You can't make this stuff up. And we don't teach you to be pedophiles. We teach against that. OK, we don't teach no man or woman to be liars, to be filled with hatred. OK, we don't teach that. We don't teach you men and women to slander one another. OK, to call people purple faggots, homosexual. We don't teach that. That's when you become the stone, the, the hay, the stubble. And the teachers gather people who like that. Why do you mm -hmm. think the congregation will sit there, watch the teacher teaching that stuff and be like, con, con, con. They'll be in agreement with it. They're, it don't bother them. I couldn't sit here and hear the bishop teaching that over and over, and I'm like, Bishop, where you got that from? Don't ask me that. Just go along with it. <laughs> I don't have no proof. Just go along with it. Right. The, the way the teacher is, his congregation is. Mm -hmm. For him them to constantly keep bringing that stuff up with no proof, and the congregation just sits there. That's what their congregation is made of, that same type of spirit as the, as the teacher. So it doesn't bother them when they speak about killing another Israelite or wishing death on somebody or lying on somebody or making things up because that's what keeps them comfortable in those chairs. Exactly. What verse we at? We just finished verse 15, sir. Go ahead. Verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temples of God? You men and women got to understand you are the temple of God. Go ahead. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. That's the Holy Spirit that dwells in every man and every woman here. Go ahead. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. In order to defile a temple, that goes twofold. That goes for you not applying God's law and the teacher teaching you it's okay to break God's laws. Everybody understand that? Read that again. If any man defile the temple of God, him God, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Go ahead. Let no man deceive himself. Brothers, sisters, don't deceive yourself. Go ahead. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool. Meaning be born again. Transform yourself to what Christ is teaching. Go ahead. That he may be wise. That he may be wise. From there, from there, for time's sake. Give me uh, Acts 20 and verse 32. Watch this. Acts 20, verse 32. The book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 32. Mm -hmm. And now, brethren, 
I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. You see that would build you A lot of you ask, how can I get built up in the spirit? Read it again. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Maybe you don't understand what grace is. Maybe you don't understand grace. We had to go over this in South Africa. Give me that uh, Titus 2. Is it 11? Thank you. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 11. For the grace of God. For the grace of God. That bringeth salvation. That bringeth salvation. Hath appeared to all men. Hath appeared to all men scattered worldwide. Talking about the Israelites. Go ahead. Teaching us. Teach. This is what grace teaches us. That denying ungodliness. Denying ungodliness. And worldly lust. And worldly lust. We should live soberly. We should live soberly. Righteously. Righteously. And godly. And godly. In this present world. In this present world. So let's sum that up. Keep the commandments. The commandments. That's the summation. That's what grace teaches us. Let's go on back now. Where yes. we was at in Acts 20, 32. Acts chapter 20, verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. So the word of his grace is his commandments. That's the only thing that can build every man and every woman in your mind and your spirit. Go ahead. And to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Uh -huh. Now, watch this, watch this, watch this. Proverbs 24, verse 3. You with me? You see, I'm going too fast? No, no, no. Okay. Proverbs 24 and verse 3. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3. Through wisdom is a house builded. Through wisdom is a house builded. Go ahead. And by understanding... It is established. And by understanding, it is established. Go ahead. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. That's what you men and women are. Okay? That's what you men and women are. Watch this. Hey, put up uh, Frederick Douglass, please. Put him up on the screen. He made a statement, and it's a profound statement. Read that. It is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Sisters, I know you got it hard, or you think you got it hard. But like he says, it's easier to build strong children. Why? Because they're moldable. It's easier to build strong children. Now watch what our job is. Read that next part. Than to repair broken men. We have a harder job, brothers. As teachers... <laughs> it's not that easy to repair broken. We're broken. Mentally, spiritually, you men and you women are broken. You know how many people, well, I ain't going to get to that yet, but I'll talk about it in a moment, but you sisters, we come in with broken minds. We've been conformed to this world, now we want to be transformed. That takes time. That takes patience. That takes practice. Practicing God's laws in our lives, okay? What is the formula to repair broken men? It's the same formula you use to build strong children. I'm going to say it again. What is the formula to repair broken men? It's the same formula to build strong children. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Get Sirach 30. Let's start at verse 7. During the men's conference, we're going to get into great detail about this. The book of Sirach, chapter 30, verse 7. So again... The same way you, you grow strong children is the same way you repair, bro you repair broken men. Watch this. He that maketh too much of his son shall bind up his wounds. Brothers, you teachers, the same way the woman is not to make too much over her child, don't make too much over these men and women that's coming in. Go ahead. And his bowels will be troubled at every cry. You know when a child trips and goes, you know, the mother goes, ah! And what did the father say? Let that boy cry. Let them cry. So likewise, when brothers go through their adversity as teachers, we're not to jump to their defense. Uh, they got to go through that. You must cry. That's what you got to do. Read on. And horse not broken becometh headstrong. See that? A horse not broken becomes headstrong. What verse you at? Verse 8, sir. Go ahead. 
And a child left to himself. And a child left to himself. A man or a woman left to themselves. Will be willful. Will be willful to commit sin. It's the same formula. Read on. Cock of thy child. Cock of your child. And he shall make thee afraid. He'll make you afraid. The same thing with broken spirits, broken minds. Go ahead. Play with him. Play with him. And he will bring thee to heaviness. And he'll bring you to sorrow. Go ahead. Laugh not with him. Don't joke around so much with your child. Just like don't joke around too much with these men and women that's coming in. Go ahead. Lest thou have sorrow with him. Lest you have sorrow with them. Go ahead. And lest thou gnash thy teeth in the end. Mm -hmm. Give him no liberty in his youth. So just like you give no, a child no liberty in their youth, when you men and women come in, we're not to give you liberty. Put you, give you something to do. Go ahead. And wink not at his folly. And we're not to wink at your sin. Your folly is your sin. Don't wink at it. Some congregations, they'll see the sin in the men and women. I remember one sister came in to say, Shalom, she had a big tongue ring in her mouth this size. I said, what the hell is that in your mouth? She said, a tongue ring? I said, get that out of your damn mouth. She said, but I've been with the body three years. Nobody said nothing to me. I, w I said, well, today is your day. Get that out of your mouth. She said, why? Is there a scripture? I said, oh, you want a scripture? Give me Jeremiah 10. Give me Jeremiah 10. Give me that real quick, brother. I said, because that elicits whoredom. I'm talking to you. All I see is some damn ball in your mouth. That's making me think things. Y'all know what I'm thinking. What the hell is this? I ain't even got to say it. Read that for me. Which verse? Verse 1, somewhere around there. Verse. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Learn not the ways of the heathen. That's not our custom, sister, to put a big ball bearing. Is, what's it called, a ball bearing? What? I don't know what the name of that thing is. A damn ball bearing on your tongue. Okay, they use that all for all kind of stuff. Some of y'all grinning back there. You don't know what it's for. <laughs> Take it out your mouth. Go on, go on back to where we was at. I'm not the one. You might get away with that with other congregations. I'm not the one. Go on back. Where we at? Surat chapter 11, verse 30, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Give him no liberty in his youth and wink not at his follies. Don't wink at their follies. It's not hatred. It's love. It's love. Don't wink at their sins. You see it, but you're going to make believe. You didn't see it. No, I saw what I saw. Go ahead. Bow down his neck while he is young. Young in, in age and young in spirit for you adults. Go ahead. And beat him on the sides while he is a child. Now, we know we can't put our hands on you, but we can put you out. Okay? We can put some kind of judgment on you. And that's not to, to, to destroy you. It's meant to build you, to make you recollect what, where did I go wrong. Go ahead. Lest he wax stubborn. Lest if we don't do that, you will wax stubborn. And be disobedient. And you become disobedient. Unto thee. Unto God's laws. Go ahead. And so, bring sorrow to thine heart. And you bring sorrow to your heart. Go ahead. Chastise thy son. And hold him to labor. We got to hold you men and women to labor. Go ahead. Lest his lewd behavior be an offense unto thee. Because if we don't hold you to labor, you will become lewd in the congregations. I hope you captains understand what I'm going over. I know the new men and women, you may not really grasp it as yet. Some of you trying to, mm, I'm not sure, but it's, that is what it is, okay? Give me a 1 Timothy 5 and 1. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Like I said, during the men's conference, we're going to go into great detail with this. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 5, verse 1. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. You are to entreat us as your fathers. Go ahead. And the younger men as brethren. And see the young men as your brothers. Go ahead. The elder women. And see the elder women. As mothers. As mothers. Go ahead. The younger as sisters. And the young women as sisters. All this goes back to the fifth commandment. That's the fifth commandment that says, Big Red, what's the fifth commandment? Honor, Honor your father and mother. That goes literal and it also goes spiritual. Does everybody see that? All right, very good, very good. Mark 9, 29, please. What are some of the solutions to getting those unclean spirits out that we come in as broken men and broken women? Mark 9, 29. The book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 29. And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing, but by 
Prayer and fasting. Some spirits that y'all battle with can only come out through prayer and fasting. Some spirits, like the weed spirit, okay? Weed smoking. As soon as I heard the spirit, the gospel, boom, put it away. Some of you, it's not that easy. Some of you have been in this truth for a couple of years. You're still battling with weed. It's time to pray. It's time to fast, okay? Some of you got that sex demon on you. Give me that 1 Corinthians 7 and 2. I can't get over it. Ah, I just got to have it. Ah, you got the vibrators on the side. The hell is this? <laughs> then you then, then you want to get married. Now, if you're dealing with a vibrator, sister, you should not get married till you are transformed. Because can't no man put up with that. Hey, here, here, look at this. <laughs> the male things don't work. We don't this don't we don't do this. Who can can who can compete with that? Can't nobody compete with that. So, sister, you're not ready to get married yet. Because as soon as she gets married, but she's accustomed to this, she goes, he don't satisfy me. The hell is this? Now you got to throw a, a leg up there. Where we at? The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7, verse 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, to avoid sexual sins, let every man let every man have his own wife have his own wife and let every woman and let every woman have her own husband have your own husband that's thus saith the lord some israelite congregations reject that they're rejecting christ the king okay so you women have your own husband now what about the woman that says uh He don't make me happy. I hear that a lot. Sisters, let me tell you something. Put up Jolly Chump. Jolly Chump. Put him on the screen. You sisters that say he don't make me happy no more. Come on, y'all. Brothers, some of these women want you to be their Jolly Chump. You know that's that chimp that grins and smiles and bangs the cymbals. Sister, we're not made to make you happy like that. I want y'all to understand that. And you simp brothers, cloak and dagger simp brothers hiding amongst us. You know who you are. You go home and become her jolly chimp. Look at me, hon. Look, look, I'll make you happy. Bruh, bruh, stop. Stop it. Stop. Hey, hey, give me the precept, 1 Corinthians 7. You know what I want? Yes, sir. What do I want? Verse 8 is 1 it? Corinthians 11. 11, what verse? Verse 9. Let me hear it. Neither was the man created for the woman. Sisters, the man was not created for you. Go ahead. But the woman for the man. You were created for us, not the other way around. Some of you women come in with a Christian, a Christianity mentality. And you believe the man was made for you. Wrong, sister. You still dealing with Satan. You dealing with Antichrist. You were made for us. We are not made to be a jolly chump to you. We were not made to make you happy day all the time. Give me that video. Give me the video. Give me the video. Give me the video with the black woman. I'm going to show you a sister in the world to help you. I'm going to give you a sister in the world who can help you women. And it's a shame that you Israelite women don't understand this. Put the woman, put the sister up on the screen. This guy hit on me, right? So um, he came up to me. He was like, hey, what's up? You married? I was like, yes. And he said, you happy? He said it like that. Like, he was like a drop the mic. He was like, you happy? And I was like, no. And I was not happy at the time. But what does me being unhappy have to do with whether or not you have a shot? The goal in marriage is not happiness. The goal is to build a lasting relationship that withstands um, the, up, the ebbs and flows of marriage. Some of y'all need to learn how to be unhappily married and still be content and still stay right where you are. Just because I might not be happy right now does not mean I won't get happy later. Do y'all understand that? Why does a woman in the world have to teach Israelite women a basic biblical principle. Give me that and told me about grow age together. Y'all don't think Abraham and Sarah argue? Oh, yes, they argued. You don't think Sarah was unhappy at times? Yes, she was unhappy! 
She couldn't have no kids. The, the daggone servant, Hagar, was mocking her. She was unhappy. You don't think Tobit's wife, what was her name, Anna, was unhappy? Mm -hmm. When she, her son didn't come home for a while? Yeah, she was unhappy. Hey, Give me that. You don't think Job's wife was unhappy right. when all her kids got killed? Right. Uh, her husband looked like he was ready to die. And just like the bishop said, I always heard that growing up. You ask a woman, what type of man are you looking for? She says, I want a man that makes me laugh. Right. How often could you keep doing that? It's nothing wrong with y'all having some fun times together. Right. But the woman builds a relationship on that consistency. You always got to cheer her up. Whatever bad happened to her in her house, you have to come and fix it now. And there's no man that could do that. After a while, she just go from man to man, from hand to hand. Because she always keep looking for someone to keep that fulfillment that no man could fulfill. So she takes it out with multiple men, which means multiple penises. Okay? Hey, that's some of you women listening right now. On Facebook, on Instagram, and in people's DM. We had that incident. I'm not happy. And then you wait for the comments. There's always a thirsty Negro that's going to say, yeah, you're not happy. Why don't you meet me such and such? And then, like one brother, Lord have mercy, he'd been with us for years. Got married, they got a bunch of kids. She unhappy. She's sending nude pictures of herself to another man. After all these years, you stinking hoe. That's why I said it, you a stinking hoe. And the brother be happy, rejoice, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay. Hey, Bishop. First of all, if that was with me, I'm with a woman and uh, what they had, like six kids? Yeah. I'll never take her back. Exactly. Ever. Right. That relationship is over. I'd rather start off new with a woman that love God that I could trust. But if her mind is that sick, that with six kids, she's sending nudes to another man, who all the other man is going to do is use her, abuse her, and throw her away. He ain't going to deal with those kids. Right. Her mind is destroyed. I want nothing to do with her. Mm -hmm. But the type of woman that uh, the bishop is describing is uh, 2 Timothy chapter... Three, verse six, watch this. This is the one that comes up to the woman and says, are you married? Yes. Are you happy? This is the man right here. Yes. Second Timothy chapter three, verse six, read that. Second Timothy chapter three, verse six. For of this sort are they which creep into houses. How? By asking you if you're unhappy. Okay, because we all get unhappy at times. Something bothers us, bills, whatever, sickness, your job, whatever. And he'll, if, if a man is constantly asking you if you're happy, at one time he's going to catch you unhappy. Read on. And lead captive, silly women. You a silly hoe, like the bishop just said. You're a silly, nasty hoe. Read on. Laden with sins, led away with diverse lust. So all he has to do is just catch you on one of them days when you're unhappy and exploit your sin and your diverse lust. Read on. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So they'll come in here. They never learn nothing. They never come into the knowledge of the truth. Just like that nasty girl that was burning the shirt up. As soon as you leave, you back in pants. She ain't never learned no truth here. As long as she was here, you leave right out of here. The first thing you do is run and put on pants. You never learn nothing. So you got people that just sitting here buying the time, buying the time for us to keep them happy. And when they become unhappy, they show their true colors. To hell with you. Go in the world and burn and die. That's right. <laughs> hey, can we get a Lord of Hand for that one? That was some good stuff right there. You might be mad at home, but burn, turn a burn, turn a burn. Right. Give me a Tobit. We don't beg nobody to stay here. If you can't get right here, go in the world and die. That's right. That's right. Tobit 8 and 6. And, I, and you know what? A sister divorced her husband over a damn dog. You can't make this stuff up. The brother from the island, you know a lot of Caribbean. Let me show you the difference between Caribbean brothers and American brothers. American brothers more or less like dogs inside the house. Caribbean brothers want dog outside the house. So you, American sister, decide I'm going to marry a Caribbean brother. Okay, you can do that. But he don't like dog in the house. You want dog in the house. This true story. He says, sis, if we get married, you got to get rid of the dog. She says, okay, I'll do that. <laughs> they get married. He come home from work and steps in a pile of SH. I told you, get rid of the dog. I want to keep my dog. Now they're fighting. 
Now you know what she does? I want a divorce. I'm not happy. Over a dog? Are you kidding me? Stupid. Some of you women are stupid as hell. You can't make this stuff up. Okay? Then you got the other one, the titty sucker. She at home with her man, laying in the bed, watching TV. She gets a message on her cell phone. She rolls over. Here the husband where ASAP is, she rolls over. She looked down at the phone. And he says, how you doing? Why don't you come by? She going to turn around to her husband. I got to get the baby some milk. She get in the car. She said, I'll be right back. She leave the baby right there. She dropped to the nigga's house. True story. Bang, bang. Thank you, ma'am. Bang, bang. Bang, bang, bang. She come back all sweaty. Yeah. The husband now says, I want some sex. She goes, <laughs> she knows she didn't take a shower with her nasty stanking behind. She going to grab the baby, throw the baby on the titty. Suck, sweaty titty. You can't make this stuff up. The baby's hungry. The baby's hungry. Did you just buy some milk from the store? Oh, I forgot. You see, you can't make this stuff up. And you weak men. And the brother goes, I want to keep her. She my wife. Brother, you get your simple self out of here, too. You ain't a man of God. You ain't a man of the Lord. Get out. You, some of you weak men and you evil sisters, just go. Give me that, uh, Tobit 8. Yes, sir. And 6. The book of Tobit, chapter 8, verse 6. Thou madest Adam and gavest him Eve, his wife, for an helper and stay. Of them came mankind. Thou hast said, it is not good that man should be alone. Let us make unto him... And aid like unto himself. And now, O oh Lord, I take not this, my sister, for lust. He didn't just take her for sex reasons. Some of you marry for lust, okay? Because she got a pretty face, big breasts, and a big booty. All that fades in time. The breasts start to come around the knees and swing. The booty starts to hang at times. Y'all know who you are? Sisters know who they are. She got five bras on right now. Trying to hold them things up. <laughs> I ain't saying there's nothing wrong with it. Some of y'all like that. If you like it, you like it. There ain't nothing wrong with that. That's what happens in time. Time changes things. Brothers, you, you, some of you know, you used to get up in the morning when you were in teenage in your 20s and 30s. Boy, like that. Now it's... Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh. Anyway, where are we at? Verse 7. And now, O Lord, I take not this my sister for lust, but uprightly. Therefore, mercifully ordain that we be may become aged together. That's what the sister in the world was talking about, becoming aged together. A sister in the world got to tell some of you sisters that's what marriage is about. Becoming aged together. You're going to have your ups and downs in marriage. It's inevitable. The Apostle Paul warned you. He said, you will have trouble in the flesh. Some of you like to close your ears. No, no, we ain't going to have no trouble in the flesh. You will have trouble in the flesh. Problems. Whether financial, whether sexual, uh, what else are the uh, kind of problems? Health reasons. You will have trouble in the flesh. Extended family. Some exactly. of you are too attached to your extended family. We hear a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, some of you are too attached to the world. You want to keep doing these worldly things. Okay, I know I, I got an email the other day about a couple that uh, the husband st wants to take his wife to a bar. And the wife is like, look, I don't want to go there. We're the only people sitting there with fringes in the board of blue art. And I said, put the nigga on the phone. I'm like, bro, your wife is telling you she don't want to go there because she feels uncomfortable around sinners. He's like, okay, I didn't look at it like that. <laughs> Simple. He wants her to go out to the bar. And it's not no bar where the men are not going to be hitting on your wife. Right. You understand? Some niggas are just that crazy, A Bishop. bar is a pickup spot. Yes. I'm like, y'all, how stupid could you be? We, hey, in South Africa, it was mad late. I forgot where it did a radio show. Yeah, we did this was far. It was, like it was far. far was can you say it on the mic? Nobody far, can hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, we did a, a radio show. It was at least two hours from the hotel. So by the time we come back, everything closed. So we had to find a restaurant where we had. It, was, it actually was a, a, bar. a bar restaurant. And we were sitting there. We didn't want to be there, but we didn't have no choice. <laughs> And we had, look at your mother, look at me. We have, 
We, there were some dudes in there. We, they were like pimps. Yes, they were pimps. Who was pimping this woman. Yeah, and you see dudes come back and forth, pick up women, go. Pick up women, go, yeah. Yep. It was one main dude who the dudes were sitting around, and a woman would come over, and he would point them out, and they would get together and leave together. That's what a bar, a bar is about, pimping, whores, and prostitution. Shady shit. Shady shit. Right, excuse my language. <laughs> I got that from this guy over there. But that's, that's what it is. Bishop, <laughs> and in case they're watching, I didn't get to say this part. I should have said it now that I thought about it. The reason why he want to go to the bar is because he want to look at ass because he don't care about his wife's ass. Mm, mm. Okay? Because that's what the men go to, there for, right. to look at other women's behinds. You don't care about your wife no more. That's why you don't care about the border blue and you don't care if somebody's going to push up on your wife because you want to go there and you want her to feel comfortable going there while you go and look at ass. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Isaiah 10. Back to Isaiah 10 and 1 again. We're almost done. The book of Isaiah, chapter 10, verse 1. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees. So just as Israel, our people made unrighteous decrees, when you read the chapter before it, Assyria came in and did the same thing. Babylon came behind and did the same thing. Uh, Persia media did the same thing. Greece and Rome. Now we're here in extension of a Roman Empire. America does the same thing. Read it again. Woe unto them that, that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness which they have prescribed. Jump down to verse 5 for time's sake. Verse 5. O Assyrian. O Assyrian. The rod of mine anger and the staff in their hand is mine indignation. God used Assyria as a whipping stick against Israel. Hold that. I'm going to come back here. Give me Psalm 17, verse 13 and 14. Psalm 17. Verse 13 and 14. The book of Psalms, chapter 17, verse 13. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. You see that? Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. God uses wicked men to check the nation of Israel. That's what Assyria rising up was about. Babylon, Persia media, Greece, Rome, America. They're the whipping stick. Okay, read that again. Arise, O Lord. Disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Read. From men, which are thy hand. You see that? From men, which are thy hand. Go ahead. O Lord, from men of the world. See that? O Lord, from men of the world. Go ahead. Which have their portion in this life. Which have their portion in this life. And whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure. Uh -huh. they, they are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. Let's go on back now to Isaiah 10 and 5. This is where we were at. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 5. O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger and the staff in their hand is mine indignation. So God uses the nations against us. Read. I will send him. Against an hypocritical nation. We're that hypocritical nation. We're the nation that got the laws. Moses gave us the commandments, okay? And we broke every one, yet we still say, I'm in the truth. I'm still in the truth. No, you're not. You're breaking every commandment. Read it again. I will send him against an hypocritical nation. So just as God sent Assyria against us as a hypocritical nation, he sent Babylon, he sent Persia media, he sent Greece, he sent Rome and America. Everybody understand that? Go ahead. And against the people of my wrath mm -hmm. will I give him a charge. Take the spoil and take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. We would tread down. In case you don't know what oppression is about, we would tread down as the mire in the street. Jump on over. Jump over to verse 17. Verse 17. We almost done. We almost done. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire. Go ahead. And his holy one mm -hmm. for, for a flame. And it shall burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day. The light of Israel shall be for a fire. Okay, give me that real quick. Jeremiah 5.14. Bishop, can I touch on that? Jeremiah 5.14. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 14. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, 
I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and this people would. So our job, as we get built up in this truth, is to prophesy, teach and preach. All the same word, prophesy, teach and preach. Study, pray, apply. Read it again, read it again. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and this people would, and it shall devour them. Watch this, watch this. Uh, back to Isaiah 10 and 17 one more time. Isaiah 10, verse 17. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire. Go ahead. And his holy one. Now that, 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 that light right there is going into the word of God, like we read in Proverbs 6, 23. It's also going into Christ. Remember, he said he's the light of the world. Read again. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire. And his holy one for a flame. That's Christ right there. Go ahead. And it shall burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day. Let me show you that. Let me show you the prophecy. Give me that second Thessalonians 2. I'm not looking at it. It might be. I don't even have it written down. Around 8 to 10, somewhere around there, where it says, um, brightness, of his coming. brightness of his coming, that verse. What yes, verse sir. is that? Verse 8. Verse 8. Thank you. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. Then shall the wicked, that wicked, be revealed. The wicked can only be revealed by the word of God. That's what preaching, teaching. That's what preaching, teaching, and prophesying is about. Go ahead. Whom the Lord shall consume. See, now what happens after we preach, teach, and prophesy? Whom what? Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. That's the word of God. Go ahead. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. We're going to usher in his second coming. Then he's going to destroy them with his coming. Watch this, Revelation 18 and 8. Revelation 18 and verse 8. Revelation chapter 18, verse 8. Therefore shall a place come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. That's the United States of America. Her plague shall come in one day, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. That's the say of the Lord. I hope y'all understand. You can't save her. You can't protest. You can't picket, defense, whatever the hell you do. You can't. It's going to happen. Go back to Isaiah 10 and verse 17 one more time. Isaiah 10 verse 17. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire and his holy one for a flame. And it shall burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day. That one day is what we read in Revelation 18 and 8. Go ahead. And shall consume the glory of his forest mm -hmm. and of his fruitful field, mm -hmm. both soul and body. And they shall be as when a standard bearer fadeth. Notice fainted. it says, and his fruitful field, both soul and body. Now, Christ warned us about that. This is for you Israelites now. Because we're going to get caught up in America's destruction. Okay? Give me that precept. Matthew 10. Fear not him who can kill the body. 1028. Thank you. Christ warned us. He warned us. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body. Wait, wait, wait. Read above that. Where he said what you hear in your ear. That part. I'm not looking at it. So just bear with me. Above it. Right above it. Somewhere above maybe two verses. I don't know. 27. Come on. 27. What I tell you in darkness. What I tell you in darkness, meaning what I tell you in parables. Go ahead. That speak in light. Now once you understand the parables, teach it plain to the people. Go ahead. And what you hear in the ear. And what you hear in the ear in secret. That's the parables, those metaphors, those similitudes. That preach ye upon the housetops. I want you to make sure everybody understands what the word of God is saying. Watch this, but it's going to piss people off. And watch what happens as a result. And fear not them which kill the body. Why do he say that? Because now you're making the Bible plain and people are mad. They're angry. They're going to want to kill you. This is what I said at the beginning of this lesson. You got to understand what you're in for. Okay, don't think it's going to be a skip toe to the tulip. Before you go there, Christ said it in 25. He, he used the analogy of himself. Just go yeah. to 25. Yes, sir. Verse 25. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant 
as his Lord. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Read on. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub. They called the son of God the devil. And you people think that that's not going to happen to you. So he's saying if they called me the devil, read on. How much more shall they call them of his household? Purple faggots. Okay, that's what we're experiencing now. Exactly what the bishop just uh, just described. You got people thinking of the worst, heinous things to ascribe to us and call us to break our spirit. Some of you are going to get caught up with it. Well, why are they calling them purple faggots? Did you ever see them engage in any homosexual activity? No, but these people are calling them purple faggots. I'm leaving. That's because you're those silly people that God warned about. You're not going to stand when the fire comes. Some of you are going to come, want to leave because we're not popular. You want to be popular. Christ was not popular. It said that he wanted, when he wanted to go into a city, he would have no man know it. Okay? He had to move quietly. It said he could no longer walk amongst his people because they were doing the same thing they're doing to us. Trying to disparage us on social media. Lie on us. Make things up. That's why in the beginning, the bishop used to tell us when we first came around him, you get, let, let it go. Just ignore it. Because we wasn't there spiritually to see how far it was going to go. You're talking about 10, 15 years ago. When they're already attacking the bishop. We wasn't wearing purple. And they were already slanging him. Attacking him. Oh, we saw him. Where was it? At the World Trade Center. He's a sellout. He's this, he's that. I'm hearing all these lies. He was like, don't listen to it. It's only going to get worse. And here we are 20 years later. It's at a level that we never thought it would come to. There's still men lying. There's still men trying while the world is dying. <laughs> Where you at? Uh, you want to jump back down to 28? No, keep reading. Just read through. It's 26. Fear them not, therefore. Christ said, fear them not, therefore. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed mm -hmm. and hid that shall not be known. Right. Everything that Esau kept secret is coming out. Go ahead. What I tell you in darkness. What I tell you in darkness and that, parables. Go ahead. That speak ye in light. Speak in the light. Go ahead. And what ye hear in the ear. The parables, the similitudes, the metaphors and allegories. That preach ye upon the housetop. Preach it plain for the people to understand. Go ahead. And fear, them, fear not them which kill the body. Now Christ is revealing as a result of teaching and preaching plain, people are going to want to kill you. Go ahead. But are not able to kill the soul. He said they can't kill your soul. That's the real you. They cannot kill your soul. Go ahead. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both Soul and body in hell. That's that thermonuclear fire. Everybody understand that? Hey, Bishop, this is heavy again. This is heavy because you've been preparing us for this. You've been telling us don't worry about the physical death. Worry about the death from the Most High God. Because a lot of you are afraid of the physical death. But there's a death after your physical body. The scriptures tell you our spirit goes before the throne of the Most High. That's what you have to be worried about. Not these niggas now that's lying on us and threatening to kill us. Okay, that's over. But your spirit is going to leave your body and it's going to go before the Most High. And he's going to decide your ultimate destiny. So that's what Christ was trying to tell us here. Stop worrying about what these Negroes are doing on earth. That's nothing compared to what the Father is going to do. Where you stand be before his throne and he tells you you're worthless and you don't deserve everlasting life. Here's the proof. Get that Revelation 14.9. Here's the evidence. The book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast. If you and worship his, the white man. And his image. And his image. Go ahead. And receive his mark in his forehead. You follow after sin. Go ahead. Or in his hand. Mm -hmm. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of of his indignation. This is what Christ warned us about. Go ahead. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. That's what we wanted right there. That's the evidence. Go back to where you was at. Matthew 10, I mean, 28. Thank you. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. 
and fear not, fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Hey, give me that precept. It says, um, the same must know it by death, death after, after pain. pain. Second Ezra 9. Second Ezra's what chapter? 9 verse 9. Read that. Second Ezra's chapter 9. Uh, let's see. Hold on. What verse? Verse 12. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 11. And they that have loathed my law, but they... And that's the evidence. They have hated God's law. You got some Israelite camps who hate God's law. Go ahead. While they had yet liberty. Liberty. Go ahead. And when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised Some it. of your Israelite brothers and sisters despise repentance. They will not take the opportunity to change and transform their lives. Go ahead. The same must know it after death by pain. By what? By pain. By what? By pain. There is pain after death. We just worried about this physical body. The Lord said, no, 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 no. You better worry about the after. Going back to Isaiah 10 and verse, uh, you was in verse 18. Yes, sir. Book of Isaiah, chapter 10, verse 18. And shall consume the glory of his forest and of his fruitful field, both soul and body. You see that? Both soul and body shall be destroyed, consumed by fire. Go ahead. And they shall be as when a standard bearer fainted. Right. Why? Because like you go into war and your standard bearer, your whole army is destroyed. Your standard bearer drops the flag. You're finished. Go ahead. And the rest of the trees of his forest shall be few, that a child may write them. Come on. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob. That's you and me. We want to be escaped. When this destruction comes, we want to be escaped. Read it again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them. We ain't going to trust in America. We ain't going to trust in the lands of our captivity. Because those lands of our captivity are the very lands that smote us. Smote us with what? Slavery, oppression, colonialism. Go ahead. But shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. Why does it say in truth? Because above it in this chapter, remember it called, what it called us? A what nation? Hypocritical. Hypocritical nation. Now we're standing in the Lord in truth. We're going to obey, study, pray, and apply. Read on. The remnant shall return. That's us. The remnant shall return. Even the remnant of Jacob mm -hmm. unto the mighty God. And that's what we're doing now, returning to the mighty God. Read. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea. We, we are the most numerous nation on earth. Go ahead. Yet a remnant of them shall return. Only a remnant of us shall return to the truth of God. That we're the Israelites to keep the commandments. Only a remnant of us. Go ahead. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. You see that? The consumption decreed is destruction. And this destruction is coming with righteousness. Go ahead. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption, even determined in the midst of all the land. That's what we read in Revelation 18. Go ahead. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrians. So just as we were commanded not to be afraid of the Assyrians. Now, notice above it, when it talks about being escaped and the Lord making his destruction, we know that that Assyrian is not talking about way back then. They ain't talking about that. Because the Holy One has not come down during the time of Assyria or Babylon, Persia media, Greece or Rome. It's talking about this time period. So now we understand this Assyrian must be talking about this white man today, the United States of America. Read that again, read that again, read that again. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian. He shall smite thee with a rod and shall lift up his staff against thee after the manner of Egypt. So this man deals with us just like the ancient Egyptians did. That's why we read in, uh, uh, oh, here, here we go. Give me that one in Revelation 11, 8, I think, where it tells us that this place is spiritual Egypt. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 8. 
and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. The great cities, Babylon the Great, the United States of America. Which spiritually, which spiritually is called Sodom. It's called Sodom. That's the LGBT agenda being pushed worldwide. And Egypt. And Egypt. This is a spiritual. Okay. Where also our Lord was crucified. This place is Antichrist. This place is Antichrist. Going back now. Isaiah 10 and verse 24. 24. Thank you. Yes, sir. Verse 24. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian. He shall smite thee with a rod and shall lift up his staff against thee after the manner of Egypt. Watch this. For yet a very little while and the indignation shall cease. God said for yet a very little while and the indignation shall cease. Go ahead. And mine anger and their destruction. That's, how, that's more proof. It ain't talking about ancient Assyria. It's talking about this modern day now. Go ahead. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge from him according to the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. Mm -hmm. Destruction, and, death. Go ahead. And as his rod was upon the sea, mm -hmm. so shall he lift up, lift it up after the manner of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from See, off. So the white man's burden upon us shall be taken away. America's burden upon us shall be taken away. His burden is the oppression put upon our people. Politically, religiously, that burden shall be lifted. Read it again. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing is the anointing of Christ, that Holy Ghost. That's what he's talking about, the Holy Spirit. Because when Christ returns, he's going to lift the burden from off of us. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Write this down, write this down. Only the Bible can fix our broken people. I'm going to say it again. Only the Bible can fix our broken people. Freeing us, freeing us from the mental slavery of oppression. Do I need to repeat it again? Yes, sir. Only the Bible can fix our broken people. Freeing us from the mental slavery of oppression. Everybody got it? Yes, 12 tribes! Worldwide. 12 tribes! Worldwide. All praises to the Lord. With that, we say shalom. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is 